please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. and welcome to another live stream with me, Gisela Kay. This is Grizzly True Crime. And today we continue to look at Crystal Rogers' case. Crystal was last seen on July 3rd of 2015. And in October of the same year, the police announced that they believe she is deceased. And eight years later, they arrested two people in connection to her murder. And that was Joseph Lawson and Brooks Houck. Now, today... We're going to be looking at the interview, the police interview with Nick Houck, Brooks's brother, and also his polygraph exam debrief. So we're doing that. If you haven't yet been following the case with us, I hope you will check out the playlist. Start with uh, the, you know, from the top of the playlist with a deep dive with a timeline, and then make your way through the rest of the content, including, of course, looking at Brooks. Hauk's uh, full interview that we did yesterday. Today we're also going to be here for probably four hours, I would say. I prepared, of course, lots of clips for you again, and we're going to be looking at that Nick Hauk interview. Welcome to all my moderators. Thank you so much for everything you do. Welcome to all my patrons. Really appreciate your support so much. And also to my members. Uh, if you don't know who the members are, their names are highlighted in green. And they've got little badges next to their name. And the badges are YouTube specific. They're not part of Patreon. So if you are here as a member, yes, you've got those little badges. And um, each milestone has different badges. So that's what it is. I saw some questions about that yesterday. Okay, so uh, Mpot says, can't wait to watch this with you. Thanks, G. You always go above and beyond. Thank you so much. All right, I just want to quickly show you an article or two. Before we get into that, I just quickly want to see... <laughs> Was it charging my mouse while I'm at it? Hold on one second. <laughs> I've been working so hard on this all day. Just give me a second here. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let me quickly find you this article I want to show you before we get into this. It's a lot that we've got to get through today. I just wanted to clarify this. Let's see where that, um, this one. Someone left a comment and I think it was actually very valid. They said, you know, even though we're talking about Brooks Hauk, that he was accused of stealing roofing shingles from a Lowe's, actually he was acquitted from that. So it's important just to note that. It's true, he was. So here they say, a jury found Brooks Hauk not guilty Thursday on charges that he stole roofing shingles from a Nelson County Lowe's store. The case involved the theft of more than 200 bundles of roofing shingles, stolen from a low store in Nelson County during four visits in 11 days. The jury's verdict was announced just after 3 p.m. Thursday, and that was after less than two hours of deliberations. Hauk was silent as he rushed with security and loved ones at his side from the Warren County Judicial Center. He faced 20 years in prison if convicted for the felony theft charges. So just to make sure that, uh, yeah, that was the jury's decision then, that he was not guilty of that, even though he was accused of that important to note. So thank you to the person who left that comment. Uh, Pumpkin Porter, welcome and thank you for being a member for 21 months. So there was that one. Then uh, Sherry Ballard, Crystal's mom. It's just a few little things I want to show you, then we're going to get into that video, okay? We're warming up. Happy Sunday to all of you. Thank you for being here. So she said, I have waited eight gruesome years. Sherry Ballard responds to the Brooke Hawks arrest. After eight years of looking for answers, Sherry Ballard is filled with emotion after a significant arrest was made in the case of her daughter's disappearance. Roger's former boyfriend, 41-year-old Brooks Houck, was taken into custody Wednesday and charged in connection to a murder. The arrest comes after recent searches of Houck's property, including his home. Thank you, Nancy. You say you like my necklace. It's in honor of uh, Crystal and her family. It's got little orange stones. And guys, if you want to use orange and pink hearts in the chat to show support for Crystal's family and friends. I see that they use orange and pink balloons. They've got orange and pink shirts, so you can do that as well, okay? So they said, uh, I'm just going to read you the statement. Ballard shares her response to Hauk's arrest on social media. So they say, to say today 
was overwhelming would be an understatement, she wrote. I have waited eight long, gruesome years for this day. To see Brooks Hauck put in handcuffs was surreal for me. I've always known he was guilty. Now everyone will know that. Okay, he's still innocent till proven guilty. I'm just going to add that, okay, here as our disclaimer, because it is. He's still going to trial and all of that. Um, so, then, I mean, they really had that gut feel that he would be arrested one day. I don't really even know the emotions I felt today. I think probably everyone you could think of. Uh, ev everyone you could think of. I have to say thank you to the FBI. Uh, God sent me an angel when they came to my door. I personally know the work a certain agent put into this case and the long, tiring hours he spent to make this day happen. Never once did he forget the fact that I was a mother and a wife going through the most tragic time that a mother and wife could go through. I cannot imagine the toll this took on him. This day would not have happened without him. Thank you to all the help he had within his office. His co-workers uh, worked very hard. I want to thank them for looking out for me and my family. Thank you also to the Nelson County Sheriff's Office for assisting in making sure this day happened. Thank you to the prosecuting attorney and his office. Thank you also to Daniel uh, Cameron, who didn't ignore my cries for help, to this community that has shown me so much love, uh, so much support and love. I want to say thank you and God bless you all. You've given me the strength to get up and carry on each day. Thank you to my friends and family who mean the world to me. This is the end to the beginning. The days will be very hard, but God will get me through them. He has answered my prayers and for that I'm grateful and thankful. Thank you God for helping me keep my faith and me never giving up on you. You are the real reason that I've survived this tragic event in my life. To my daughter and husband, I just want to say I love you with all my heart. Breaks my heart, Tommy, that you wasn't here with me for this day. Justice is beginning for you both and my promise to you is becoming a reality. I pray you are both together in heaven, smiling down at this day. If only you could be here with us, you'll always be a part of my life, no matter where you are. Give each other hope for me, miss you both. Okay, so that was the statement from Crystal's mom. I mean, she lost her daughter, and then 16 months later, her husband was shot. That is unbelievable case, this, right? I just want to see this one as well. Oh, and I just wanted to, this was just to trigger my memory here. New details reveal Nick Hauk's ties to Tommy Ballard's death. So the reason we're looking as well at uh, Nick Hauk's interviews today is because while he hasn't been charged with anything, right? He hasn't been charged with a thing, completely innocent. He has, however, sold a gun to the prosecution, probably by an FBI undercover agent, using a fictitious name, and the prosecution now says, the special prosecutor in this case says, they believe they now have the gun that was used to murder Tommy Ballard, Crystal's dad. So that is a huge deal. Okay, so now, <laughs> let me fetch that video for you. Hold on one second, please. Here we go. Thank you all for being here. If you haven't yet, please like the stream and share it. You can say hashtag Team Crystal, hashtag Justice for Crystal Rogers, or hashtag justice for Tommy Ballard if you want. Um, all of those work. Hashtag grizzly true crime. It helps to categorize everything together on social media. So thank you so much. All right. Now let me get this for you. And. Prepared a whole bunch for you today. <laughs> I hope you're ready to spend some time with me on this Sunday. Okay. So here we're looking at an interview little clip from Rick McCubbin, the former Bardstown police chief. So we're just looking like yesterday, if you were there with us yesterday, we looked at a few little clips before we got into the interview and we're going to do a similar thing now. Okay, so let me just quickly see if I'm missing anything. Okay, here we go, everyone. Are we ready? <laughs> Sorry if I've missed all your comments. Thank you to all uh, the members and well done for reaching your milestones. Thank you for your support and everything. Mods, if you could help me thank people. Uh, it is a lot. It's a lot to cover here. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to concentrate. Guys, get your notebooks. <laughs> Did you do your homework? <laughs> Yesterday you got homework. Did you see it at the end? <laughs> okay, so now let's have a look at all of this i'm sure the sound i've made sure in my uh, software and everything to boost it and to clean up the audio to make the visuals a lot better that's what takes so much time right um is finding all these clips for you and putting it all together for you so that we can really get into it okay dr mcdreamy it's nice to see you in chat you said thanks to g and mods for all their hard work best channel and chat on youtube thank you so much gene says i'll be here the whole time okay so let me start playing this this is uh, rick mccubbin so let me give you some context 
who was so pissed off with, uh, sorry, yeah, Rick McCubbin, who was so pissed off with Nick Hauk that he made sure he's going to get his ass fired. Basically, he's like, this guy is not going to behave like this and interfere with an investigation by telling his own brother to get the hell out of a police interview under my watch. So he's like, yeah, uh, he, he, he got Nick Hauk fired, okay? So let's just see what he said here. The investigators, I guess, obviously wanted to speak with Brooks and work with Brooks and interview Brooks. Um, Nick, Nick kind of injected himself in a, in a, in a, in a way that I didn't like. Um, ethics and integrity sometime are all we have and um, I didn't think he displayed a good uh, example of either. You know, along, along that ground. Uh, can I get this? Sure, please. Yes. Can you come out? No. So here I'm just reminding you how Nick Hauk interfered. He called his brother while his brother was in the interview room with Detective Jon Snow. We looked at this yesterday in detail, okay, frame by frame, word by word. We, we pull this whole thing apart, right? So check it out if you missed it. I've also uploaded the un, you know, uninterrupted version onto Patreon and it's actually for public uh, views. So if you want to just check out my Patreon uh, mods, if you could share that, then everyone can just have a look at it. And if you feel like signing up, you can, but that one you can just view uninterrupted if you want that. So this is the moment where Nick Hauk phoned his brother Brooks. And remember, Nick Hauk was a police officer and he's telling his brother, get the hell out of there. Okay, so look here. I, I'm, up, I'm up here. I know that you didn't know. I'm up here in this interview with um, the detective, Detective Snow. I've been up here a good little while. I'm, I'm filling out this uh, this statement here and everything. Do, is it, do, are you telling me that's? Are you telling me that's what I need to do? And Nick says he didn't tell him to leave. I know. I, I know. I don't. I know. I, see I, that I, today. I'm not, I know that. But what did I look at it? Is I, I'm innocent. I ain't done nothing wrong. What well, you know? I know you told me innocent people got jammed up, but if you're telling me to leave, I'll get up and leave. If you want me, if you want me to. So in what we're going to see today from Nick Hauk's interview, he actually explains the situation a bit, why he called his brother, how he knew he was there and for how long. And then also saying, no, I never, I never told him to leave. But he did say why he felt like maybe his brother should leave. So we're going to get into all of that today. I know I'm going through a lot, but I'm trying to get this guy to help me. I don't think she, I don't think she's ran off with some other guy. I don't, I don't believe that. You can't make me think that. No. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, so, so do I. I'll do exactly what you're telling me to do right now. You want me to get up and leave? Man, I don't think these guys. I don't think. I don't think these people got vindictive just to scare me. Just to scare me for no reason. Man, this is not their family. This is not their family. I don't think they got vindictive just to to scare me for no reason. Man, that this is not their family. This is not. <laughs> all right. Thank you. You guys are like wow, wow, wow. Look at Detective Snow taking it all in. Okay, this is just this clip. I just wanted to give this context for anyone who's only watching this episode and didn't watch yesterday's live stream. I'm sure they'll do their homework after this, right? He thinks y'all will fuck is what he thinks. I don't know who he is. Nick, my brother. And, um, you know, he wouldn't cooperate, didn't want to talk to uh, the sheriff's office who handled Crystal's disappearance, of course, as you know. And, and you know, I literally had to give him a direct order. Um, you're, you're, you're going to cooperate. My, my, you're going to unass that chair and you're going to cooperate. And that's a direct order quote. That's where that came from. Get out of my office, walk your ass over there, and you're going to cooperate. Uh, I can't do that with you as a civilian. You plead the fifth, you can do whatever. But when you're a police officer, we don't have that luxury. We do not. We took an oath. We don't have that luxury. If the investigators say we'd like to talk to that officer, we're going to talk. Um, so, 
you know, a lot of things started to, to add up in his uh, behavior. I couldn't put a finger on it, um, but I didn't have to. But I also knew that as long as I was chief, he was not going to be a police officer. So that's why I moved. Uh, and I, I called him in one day and I said, <clears throat> I, I'm going to fire you. We have a process in Kentucky. I said, but I'm going to fire you. And obviously, again, the, the mayor's the ultimate, but I said, I am going to the mayor as soon as you leave this office and you're not going to wear a badge. You, you do not deserve to be a police officer. Um, and he was very, okay. <laughs> I thought, wow. I mean, just to be like, well, okay. I mean, it's only his job he had for like a decade, right? Nick Houck, and he's just like, oh, okay. He probably didn't believe he would actually get fired, right? So now we're just going to quickly look at a clip um, of the family of Crystal, of uh, Sherry. We'll look at that now, and then we're getting into the interview, okay? Okay. <laughs> Another was just down the road at his brother's house, Nick Houck, where we also saw police dogs sniffing around a white pickup truck and his home. Rifles were pulled from there as well. Sorry, I spoke too soon. We're now looking at the search warrant that was executed at Nick Houck's house and then Sherry's reaction to all of it. One neighbor named Ashley Mudd said she, her husband heard a loud bang around 6 o'clock this morning that woke him up. She went outside and saw the police lights surrounding Nick's home. I knew exactly what they were doing, where they were at, and been waiting for it. I'm so happy it's finally happening. We need them here. I feel better than I did. Um, I'm just praying that this is a step closer to answers for us. Answers that have eluded Sherry and Tommy Ballard for 13 long months. Their daughter, Crystal Rogers, has not been seen alive since July 3rd, 2015. But on Thursday afternoon, they got what they believe could be a break in the case. Detective John Snow, who has been the lead investigator since day one, came to this house at the corner of Pulliam and East Forest Avenue to personally serve a search warrant to Nick Houck. Houck, a former Bardstown police officer, was dismissed from the department in October for interfering with the investigation. It was the very same month his brother, Brooks Houck, Crystal's boyfriend, was named as the only suspect in the case. I would bet my life that he's guilty. That's how sure I am that he's guilty. And whatever crime was committed, both Sherry and Tommy Ballard have always thought Nick Houck was involved. On Thursday afternoon, neighbors say Houck talked briefly with investigators, signed off on that warrant, and then went back inside his grandmother, Anna Whiteside's home. Recently, she's been called to court to testify about a car she sold. A car investigators believe was used in the crime. Remember, she sold her white Buick just before police. They already executed a search warrant at multiple properties of the house. And then they were like, okay, next they're going to be looking into the Buick. And then this grandmother sold her Buick, which... Wow, okay, okay. Look, and look at her here. Fine. The car is still at the KSP lab, and what was on that search warrant has not been made public. Still, Crystal's parents are holding out hope. I'm ready, but I'm not ready. <laughs> you know, I'm ready to put closure so maybe we can just deal with everything. I'm like her. I hate when that day comes, but I want to find out what they did to my daughter. Earlier today, Rick, Nelson County Sheriff Ed Mattingly said he would not be going into the specifics of that search warrant. But Tommy Bowd, you just saw him, Crystal Rogers' father, has been told it's DNA found in the car his grandmother sold several months ago. And as you just heard, that's the very car investigators believe was used in the crime. Okay, so now we get into Nick Houck's interview with Kentucky State Police. Also, seeing those clips, oh man, then Tommy Ballard was shot after that. He never got to see this, you know, the, the arrest of Brooks Houck and Joseph Lawson and to get answers now, he needs answers too. But it sounds like they're getting close to answers for Tommy Ballard as well. If the prosecution now believes that they now finally have the gun that they believe killed Tommy Ballard. Okay, so now this interview was conducted on July 15th of 2015. Do you guys remember when the interview was conducted for Brooks Houck? I'll wait. <laughs> okay, we can't wait. We've got to keep going because there's a lot to go over, right? Um, but that was on July 8th. Crystal was last seen on July 3rd of 2015. Brooks Hawk did not report her missing. He said he wasn't even concerned at all, not even a little bit. So it was Crystal's family that reported her missing on the Sunday, July the 5th 
after they weren't able to get hold of Crystal, and then they actually ran into Brooks Howe at a gas station, and they saw Brooks, and they saw um, Crystal and Brooks' son, Eli, in the back, and they're like, whoa, Crystal would never be without her child. She'd never just leave her baby. Not even with the father of the child, right? So that was a huge red flag to them, and they went straight to uh, the police station to report Crystal missing. So, yes, okay, we got that going. So, <laughs> thank you all for answering. July 1st, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay, I should check the answers. July 8th, that was a Brooks house, July 8th. This is now July 15th. So, about, you know, a week later, they thought, okay, now they're going to interview the brother. So, let's have a look at it. It's quite long, okay? We're going to pause and comment in between. Um, so, it's similar format to yesterday. Nick, this is uh, Detective John Wallen. Hello. How are you? Hey, John. Fine, how are you? Yeah. See if we can find some. You know what that chair is? This chair is kind of a secondary one we find out that way. What you all talked about on the way over here? Or? No, we just basically talked about that he was he was going to come over and talk to us, but talking about his car, really. Okay. Yeah, you like the breeze, Snitty. It's actually John's car. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. A little, little dirty. I need to get in clean it, but it's been raining so much that it's hard to do anything with it. So, just want to make sure you understand you're not under arrest. Okay. I'm gonna make sure that's that's. Oh, I know that. I'm, yeah, I know that. Okay, and, and it's my understanding that you, you testified at the grand jury this morning, not correct? Okay. Did you guys see that? When it's like, we just want you to understand, you're not under arrest. And then he also does a bit of the hands. He says, oh no, I know that. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> now, he's never been arrested. Please remember that. He's never been arrested or charged with anything. We can almost say yet. We can almost say yet, right? Okay, so continuing on. And Mr. Gohagen had made mention of... Uh, that you'd be willing to come in and, you know, un under oath, whatever that is. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, so you're still fine doing mm -hmm. that? No problem. I guess let's just kind of start from the beginning. You don't know us, or I, I don't know you, you don't know me, so uh, let me get your full name. Nicholas Howe. Oh, sorry, yes. TNT. Is it the yeah, AT&T? Okay. Any other cell or phones? Blue, or Bluegrass. It's one or the other. AT&T or Bluegrass. I just changed it about uh, maybe a month ago. Okay. okay what's your date of birth? <coughs> All right. You reside there at 99 Olympia Drive with anybody else? My girlfriend. Okay. Who's, what's her name? Even though it's out there, I redacted his uh, birth date and his girlfriend's name and her birthday as well. Um, so... Yes, I just pointed out there that, I don't know, I always thought that Brooks was the older brother, but actually Nick Hauk, he's the older brother. He's the police officer, the older brother. Brooks um, was into construction and had rental properties. Actually, both brothers had rental properties of their own. Uh, Nick makes that clear in this interview, like we each have our own, okay? So, yes, continuing on here. How long you live there? We've only been there for... Uh... Two or three weeks. Okay. And we just, I don't know if it matters, we just moved from 104 Glenview Drive to okay. Gardstown. 104 Glenview, what did you say? Glenview. Glenview, okay. Okay. Um, I guess it's just kind of. I just see questions in chat about who's his representative or attorney or whatever. He doesn't have one. Remember, these hawks are very confident that they are 100% innocent and they don't need um, an attorney. So, yes. I'll start from the beginning. Um, you know what you're here to talk to, to us about, right? Sure. Okay. What, what is that? Yeah. Crystal Rogers. Okay. How do you know Crystal Rogers? She's uh, my brother's uh, girlfriend. Okay. And, and how long have have you known her or how long have they been i'm assuming did you know her before they started dating no i didn't 
So when, when did, how long have they been dating? Uh, I'm two or three years, maybe. So two or three years? Mm-hmm. And they have a child together, is that, that right? Yes. Okay, what's his name? Eli. How old is Eli? Uh, about two and a half. Okay. Okay, and do, do they reside together or do they? Yeah, they reside together. Okay. What's their address? One, uh, one thirteen or one sixteen Linview. So y'all live pretty close when you were at the old house. Mm -hmm. And your brother. That's another thing that I learned from this interview is how close they actually lived at the time of Crystal's disappearance. I mean, on the same road, on Glenview Drive. Nick Hauk and his girlfriend lived just a couple of houses down. And then after Crystal went missing, Nick and his girlfriend moved to a new address. So that is interesting. His name is Brooks, is that right? Yeah, Brooks Hauk. How much interaction did you have with, with Crystal over the years? Almost nine. Okay. When did y'all, how, how often would you see your brother and her or, or just her? Or? I mean, I passed her on the street and that's about it, you know. I mean, my brother's got a bunch of rental properties and stuff and I mean, I just don't see him. I, I see him on the road and that's about it, you know. Okay. He's so busy, we just, we, we don't hang out much anymore. Okay. And did y'all go to family functions together around Christmas and Thanksgiving? Or? You, could, you know, if we've got time, we do. You know, I mean, I've got about a dozen rental properties and work full time with the PD and obviously got a family. And sure. You know, I mean, we're just busy guys. Sure, I understand that completely. We, I think we can we can sympathize with that uh, definitely. Uh, so, in in the two to three years that they've been dating, how many times have you been around Crystal? I've been down here to this house. I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe half a dozen times or so. Sure. Could be more, could be less. I mean, we're, we're not trying to, to yeah. put you into a specific number. Yeah, I know what you mean, sir. Uh, I'm just answering questions as we go along. I'm just going to pause it there for a second. Uh, someone said, remind me, please. Sorry that I couldn't see who said it now, but you said, remind me, please. When did this murder happen? Uh, we presume on July 3rd of 2015. That's the last time Crystal was seen alive. She entered her home around 5 p.m. Never seen again she was uh, supposed to have date night with her boyfriend the father of her uh, fifth child uh, so the boyfriend brooke brooks hauk right and she wasn't seen again so this was happening on july 15th of 2015 and brooks her boyfriend at the time was actually interviewed on july 8th so just five days after she was last seen <laughs> yeah valley girls like we're just busy guys <laughs> shaking my head we're just busy guys, okay? They're very busy. They're not sure if they meet up for Christmas or Thanksgiving or anything like that, which makes it interesting as we keep watching because later we find out that on July 8th, right after Brooks Hauk was interviewed and when his brother called him, Nick called him, then the two of them actually drove out to the Hauk family farm together. So this whole narrative of, so pay attention to it, of no, we don't really go out there together, I'm always there by myself, we don't really meet up, we don't see each other, but then later, that makes it even worse, is later, when you told your brother to leave the interview, allegedly, he says he didn't, but that's what Brooke said, <laughs> then you both drove out to the farm together, and you left at like half past 11 at night, so what, what were they doing there that night? What were they discussing that night, right? Okay. Um... I just want to, Yorkie, you're saying how are the mother or daughter connected other than just a local unsolved murder? Are you talking about the other double homicide? That is the, the Netherlands, right? Because there's a couple of, there's obviously Crystal Rogers, Tommy Ballard, Jason Ellis, and then this double homicide of the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, so far we don't know that there's any connection at all. But, uh, and it may not be connected at all, but we are yet to see. That's just another unsolved murder at this point, yes. What did you know about them, their kind of, their relationship? What did you know about their relationship? I mean, they didn't really argue or anything in front of me. That's what you're getting at. I don't, I mean, they, usually they seem pretty happy to me. So. I mean, we, we all have, you know, we've got, I've got a brother and 
he something's going on, he'll call him bitch. You know, mm-hmm. he'll call him, and hey, you yeah. won't believe what this crazy woman did, or you won't believe this, or you won't believe that. I mean, did he ever get, give you anything like that? No, nah, well, he didn't complain to me. Okay. So how often would you see your brother? I know you said you pass him on the street, and that's about it. But how, I mean, how many times a year would you, would you see your brother? You know, if I need a tool or something like that to borrow from him, I may see him, but uh, I mean, I couldn't really put a number on okay. it. You know, I mean, I, I've been, you know, I've, got, I've had the rental properties now for four or five years. I've got most of the tools I need, but every once mm-hmm. in a while he does have something, you know, that I need or vice versa. So do you have a, do you have a separate company established for your oh, rental yeah. company? Okay. Yes. I know, and I know he's got a rental company property, is that correct? So is it, are two completely separate yeah, entities? You don't, you don't do business with family. Uh, trust me, I understand that too. Um, what's the name of your business? Which is also interesting. If you've seen the Oxygen series, um, it's like a docu-series on this case, right? The disappearance of Crystal Rogers. There, you know, it's implied that there could be a whole, and it's just speculation, okay? That it could be like a, a, a drug ring or network or connections or some shady business happening that may or may not involve both of these brothers. We just don't know. But when it's like, nope, nope, you just don't do business with family, you know, and then the officer's like, oh, yeah, I know what you mean there. I like how they, you know, they do so well in these interviews. Remember the one yesterday with Detective Jon Snow that was so good. He was just like playing dumb. I'm like, really? So tell me more about that. Yes. Okay. It was house properties, but it no longer exists. I dissolved it. Okay. In 2014. So it's just kind of doing it on your own. Yeah, I just decided I didn't need the LLC. I mean, just extra money for nothing the way I saw it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm not expecting to get sued or anything, so. Sure. And your brother, what's what's the name of his business? Hal Reynolds. Okay. How many rental properties do you think he's got? I'm going to guess between 80 and 100. And he builds full-time also. So is he a framer or is he a... He's in everything. Everything. So he's, he's your all, all-purpose man then? He is. What's, I mean, what's, what, does he do something more than, a, I mean, does he do one thing more than another? Like, does he frame more than, than anything else? Does he roof more than anything else? I mean, he's just into all of it. I mean, he jumps right there and helps whoever's out there. I mean, obviously he has, uh, you know, certain guys come in to do, like, the plumbing and electric stuff sure. like that that are licensed. Sure. But, I mean, he's, he's in there getting his hands dirty. Okay. Okay. So is he building for himself for the rental company, or is he building... No, he, usually he uh, sells the houses that he builds. Okay, so he's a, a what do they call that, a... Uh, Slumlord? No, not a slumlord, but uh, there's a, uh, you built a spec house. Yeah, spec house. No, uh, he's building houses $150,000 and up now. Okay. Custom homes. So you said you, you, you seen it, it may be one, you know, just a handful of times a year. It could be more than that. It just depends on what, yeah. what your situation is. Okay. And, and did you, in, in the times that you did see Crystal, I mean, did did you ever have any conversation with her? Or? No, I mean, I really, I did. I never had any issues with Crystal, but I wasn't around her that much. I mean, she seemed like a pretty easygoing person to me. Okay. Um, do you know any of her family? No, I don't. What about, what about your nephew? Do you spend time with him or? I wish I could say yes. I mean, I, no, I don't really see him much. Okay. Well, now, didn't, didn't your brother run for sheriff, I guess, he, last he election? Did. How did how he have time to run a campaign? I don't have any idea what he was thinking or anything. So in 2014, Brooks Hawk actually wanted to run for sheriff. And <laughs> Nick Hawk here is explaining that it didn't go well. That like, how did it go? He's like, not good. <laughs> okay, that he, he didn't become the sheriff. He wanted to run for sheriff just out of the blue. He's explaining sort of his thought, thought process of why. You know, that he just thought, well, I've done so well in all my businesses, so I might as well run for sheriff. So that's interesting. So have a, have a listen to what he says here. I just, 
I guess he thought he was really good at building. He had a lot of success there, and he thought he'd transition into the law enforcement. Okay. But uh, I told him don't do it. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, what? How did that turn out? Not good. Politics is, you know, police is one thing, politics is another. Exactly. So, um, I mean, did, did why did he decide to run for for sheriff? Did he did he ever say? He, just, he never said. I guess he thought he could. I, I don't know if he planned on uh, continue building and then uh, also be sheriff. I don't know what he was thinking. But right. I tried to talk some sense into him, and I guess it went in one ear and out the other one. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. If you would have won sheriff, you think he'd made you as chief deputy? I wouldn't work for him. You wouldn't work for him? I mean, I'm happy with the PD. No, no reason to leave. Isn't that so hectic? He says about his own brother, I wouldn't work for him. So if he became the sheriff, he's like, okay, if you became the sheriff, do you think that your brother would make you deputy? And he's like, I wouldn't work for him. <laughs> wow, okay. Interesting. Uh, Zonia says the volume on this is awful. I would encourage you to go and look at the originals. Oh my word. I've boosted the the visuals, the colors, the sharpness, the sound as much as I could. Uh, cleaned it up as much as I could. Put in all the little details and the captions. Yes, many hours. <laughs> so I hope that you guys, if you if you do appreciate that and you have seen the original, please like and share, okay? So that others can see it as well. If you're having trouble with the sound, most of the sound is coming out of my right earphone here. So just switch your AirPods or whatever it is you're listening to. Put it on your TV, on your tablet, whatever it is. I hope that uh, you will uh, find a way to listen nicely. Okay, there is some background noise in the room. Yes, indeed. But I've done my absolute best with this. How long have you been to PD? I was, I was with Lebanon for about a year and a half. I think I've been here for about uh, eight and a half, nine, something like that. Okay. okay. What year did you come on in Lebanon? 2005. Okay. Write that down. You said you was living for a year and a half? Mm-hmm. What made you come here to Barksdale? This is just where I was from. More money, better yeah. benefits. I mean, I, I started out at $7.80 an hour, and then it went to $15 an hour, whatever it was, and I started here. So yeah, it's quite a, that's a double long. Yeah. It's about double your salary. Mm-hmm. And, uh, any trouble since you've been to PD with anybody? No. Everybody get along pretty good? For the, for, the, for the most part. I mean, obviously a bunch of officers with type A personalities. I mean, uh -huh. you're going to have a few conflicts. But sure. You, you never had any conflict with anybody specifically or anything no. like that? Uh, what shift are you working right now? First shift. How long have you been on that shift? So... Lieutenant Peter Pronzo, are you here? <laughs> What's the third shift? Uh, Joe Jackalone, which maybe you worked with. He's also from the NYPD, former NYPD, okay? Said that usually the third shift would be from... Oh, no, I can't remember what they said. Um, I think it was from like 4 p.m. to midnight. But then others answered as well. I asked on X, formerly known as Twitter, and... The, the, con the general consensus was if he's working third shift, it would be 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. usually. Now, the reason I think it's important just to note that is just to just keep it in our mind. Because what was he up to? What was he doing? Of course, the police will by now know. It's been eight years of investigating on the day that Crystal Rogers was last seen and the next day and so on. Right. So they've been investigating the house for a long time. So, yes. Okay. So 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. should be the usual uh, third shift in the Bardstown police. See, some of you guys are saying 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., so it's all, <laughs> all different. But the general consensus was 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. or so. Uh, just changed that not too long. We went to 12-hour shifts. It's probably been in the neighborhood four to six months, maybe. What were you on before that? I was working at four to two o'clock in the morning. Who were the guys that you worked with on that shift? Uh, who were the guys on that shift? Uh, it, was, it was me. Jason Ellis was on that shift. Uh, let's see, Andrew was on third. Nathan Phillips, I believe, was on second. Michael Medley. I can't remember who else was on the shift. It seems like it runs together now. I've worked with mm -hmm. all of them at some point or another. Yeah. You know, but there was five or six of us on that shift, so. 
Um, Based on Jacqueline's comment, you have a conflict with Officer Ellis? Question mark. Hmm. He did work the same shift um, as Officer Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis was ambushed and pretty much assassinated on his way home from work the one day. And that's where the whole like drug speculation comes in because Jason Ellis was the K9 guy. He had his uh, K9 dog Figo and out of nowhere he was killed. No one knows the motive really. So did he start investigating things and start finding things out? You know, speculatively about other police officers? I don't know. When's the, when's the last time that you'd seen Crystal? I'm sure it was sometime I seen her just driving around out on the road, but I don't really remember where I was at or so. Did you, so you knew her. You, you knew her enough to know her car to know where her car was. Yeah, oh yeah. What kind of car did she drive? A maroon uh, Impala. Okay. Maroon Impala. And she lived with uh, your brother. At the Glenview address, you did. Okay. And would she? I mean, would she weigh back when she saw you? Oh you, yeah, she saw me. She, you know, I mean, she I, probably would recognize me in the truck. If I was out in the cruiser, you know, usually she'd see me. Yeah. Um. So how many? How often would you see her out on the road? I mean, was it obviously more often than you saw her person? But probably maybe two or three times a week. Okay. The last time you, you remember seeing her, she was in a car driving around. That's what I'm assuming. I don't. I, I'm not 100 percent, but I, yeah, I'm almost for certain. Okay. The last time that you actually were in the phys physically in the same room with her, oh, was, when was that? It's been a long time ago. I don't. I don't really remember. We were talking Christmas, Thanksgiving, before that, after that. Could have been Christmas, Thanksgiving. Okay. I mean, did she? What? What did she? Talk about anything specific, anybody specific? I don't remember that. I can't even remember what I did two days ago. You know, I really. <laughs> Which later these officers point out because he keeps on like not remembering things. He's like, but we're police officers, so we're supposed to remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, not a great thing for a police officer to say. <laughs> like, I can't remember what I did two days ago. What? I do have to quickly show you guys how close his house was. Okay. At the time of Crystal's disappearance, he moved out just after that. Okay, so I'm going to show you that quickly, just so that you can see it. Have a look at this. Okay, here we go. Map time. Okay, we're back. I just quickly want to show you this. Look here. It's unbelievable how close the houses actually were. Okay, like this. We'll zoom in like this for you and then we'll have to resize it. But look, look at this. It's unbelievable. So my point is when he says, nah, he saw Crystal maybe like last year. How? Like you literally lived on the same street. You're for the very first time, I think, I think an uncle, right? Is your nephew Eli? So Brooks Hawk's home where Crystal lived with Brooks and Eli, and then her four other kids would uh, come and go to the house as well, was here. And like literally down the road, here's where I say Nick's original house because that's where he lived. And when Crystal went missing, um, he moved out like the next week. So they're going to ask him a lot about the move and the blanket in the back of his cruiser and all kinds of stuff. But they were literally neighbors. So all of this, I have to show you this to continue so that you can just see. How is it possible that you say, oh, I didn't see her, I didn't see her, maybe last year. Nope, no, nothing about her, nothing. This, But here and there, he's got details about what they thought about or, you know, like how close they were or things like that. So if I even just, uh, where's that little measuring tool? It's moved now a little bit. But anyway, if we go from this house to this house, it's 0 0.12 of a mile. I mean, let's even do it for, hello. No, we don't want to copy to clipboard. We want to put it into meters. 
for those of us who working 185 meters. And you're trying to tell me that <laughs> you, don't, you don't know when you last saw her. Maybe a year ago, something like that, right? Wow, okay. So anyway, so let's do the measurement done. We'll go back here. I'll resize it for you in a moment. And we carry on from here, okay? But just so that you know, keep it in your mind how close you really live to them. And of course, I don't know, I find it a little bit odd that he moved right after that, but okay. It's a factor though, to take into account. All right, so let's let's keep going. Okay. Um, so you said you were there in her seemed happy? For the most part, they did. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, for the most part, you said, what, what, what about well, it? I, there's one example I can think of. You know, I think there's been times when Brooks said that, you know, I think sometimes she complained that, uh, you know, maybe he treated his son better than her kids or something okay. like that, but that's that's about the only thing that really stands out. Sure. But nothing, nothing that, like, was seriously strained in the relationship. No. Just at all. Sorry, I hope you interrupt less as we go along, but we do have to comment on these things. That's interesting because... That's what Brooke said to Sherry that they fought about a little bit. That's what Brooke says the little spat was about on the very last day that Crystal was seen. Is they had a little fight, a little argument about how differently Brooks treats her other four children compared to the child they had together, Eli. I mean, he would only pay for Eli's groceries, not the other four kids, okay? So it's not just a rumor that is how he treated them. So... It's interesting that Nick is saying, well, well, let me give you an example. One example would be that, but that is an, a very interesting example based on, oh, well, your brother has said that that's actually what they last thought about. And your brother was the last person to see her alive. So, oh boy. Um. Okay, so, so you said the, la the last time you saw her was within the last... Probably within the last uh, couple weeks, maybe. Last couple weeks. Um, did she have a job? I think at one time she worked up at the fast food mart on Bloomfield Road, but okay. that's been some time ago. Okay. Since then, I mean, do you know where she's working at? Or is, does she have a job? I'm not even sure. Uh, did she help Brooks out on, on with the rental, rental properties? Or? Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Right. Um, and when, when you would get together, as you know... How can he not know anything about that? But maybe he doesn't, okay? However, Crystal told her mom the day before she went missing that Brooks thinks... She said, Mom, Brooks, th he thinks I'm an idiot. He thinks I'm stupid, but I know everything. I have figured out basically what he's doing by avoiding the IRS, that he's taking cash payments for many of these properties, and she started, you know, looking into what he was really up to with these uh, shady businesses. So, you know, for <laughs> maybe Nick didn't know anything about whether Crystal uh, was helping Brooks out to rent out some properties, but interesting that he didn't know anything, especially when you live right there, same road. And why'd you move? Uh, as, you know, just you, and her and Brooks are, are a bigger part of the family. Where would you all get together at? Yeah, I don't know that we ever really got together. I mean, you know, obviously she's been over at mom's house, you know, and I've seen her out there, but I mean, that, that's been a while back. Okay. So we really didn't, we really didn't get together. Okay. Now, is your mom's house down, uh, is it about y'all's family farm? Mm -hmm. Ask about her Road. Okay. Um, I think we went out there I went up there the other day. There's a, a like a black barn kind of a thing. It's called the Skid House. Skid House, okay. Um, was there I just see these people confused in the chat. This is not Detective Snow here. These are two other Kentucky State Police um, detectives that are talking to Nick Hauk, okay? So it's not Detective uh, John Snow. That's not him here. I didn't catch the names in the beginning there. I tried. I listened a few times and I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to botch the spelling or anything, okay? But it's two other officers from the Kentucky State Police, just to make sure you know. I saw mill in there one time. I saw the salt cedar. My, there. Yeah, my grandfather, he, he did. Oh, he right. saw mill. I saw the salt cedar. I said, there's got to be a, a portable mill here somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, my grandfather, you know, he died when I was like maybe six or seven. So, I mean, it's been, it's been a long time. Yeah, that's been a long, okay. a long time. Right. Yeah, that, that had nothing to do with the case. I just, my own, my own person, I love cedar. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, so you don't remember the last time that you had seen Crystal. How about uh, when did you find out Crystal was missing? When do you remember finding out? Yeah, within a couple of days. Okay. Um, how, how did you find out? I, I don't know if I saw it on TV or... Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, I don't know if Brooks had mentioned it or I saw it on TV. It was all over Facebook and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. It's on I mean, national news. I mean, this is, this is, for all intents and purposes, your sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. And she she's missing. I mean, you, do, do you and your brother just not talk to that extent that, you know, he... That's, that's kind of bad, isn't it? I mean, you know, yeah, I mean. but but he never he never called you and told you she was missing, or no, nobody else in your family called and told you that she was missing. Or called and asked, had you seen her? Yeah. Or, it was it unusual for her to take off like that? Or I know Brooks has said she's taken off to her, uh, I think her mom's before, but I, you know, I another little potential slip up. I don't know from which brother. Brooks is the one arrested. Okay, charged with murder and tampering with the evidence. Nick here says. Brooke said she's taken off to her mom before, but that is not what Brooke said. Brooke said that um, sometimes Crystal would go to Sabrina's house. You know, he mentioned Sabrina, which I think was a, a cousin. So here he's saying Brooke said she's taken off to her mom before. Mm -mm, no, no, it's not the story. It's not the story that Brooks. <laughs> I'm sure when Brooks watched this, he's probably like, no, 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 not the mom's house, the cousin's house. Okay. Or a fantasy parties. Remember that as well. Oh dear. I didn't know anything about that either. So, I mean, I, I know when you get baby mama drama, you try to stay out of it. But I mean, you would think yeah. if he was really, you know, concerned that he would, mm. hey, my brother's a police officer. He knows what to do. Let me let me call him and see what's going on. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not like that. Okay. So you, you don't know how you found out she was missing, whether it was from Facebook or TV or, or if he mentioned it. No. I mean, I thought you know I. I saw people at Boxing, you know, talk to me about it, so, like I said, it's ran together at this point. Sure. I mean, has he, talk, has he talked to you about it a lot, or? Very little, if any, you know, I mean. He's a great police officer, isn't he? We have no idea why he got fired. I mean, he has no idea that his potential sister-in-law went missing. Wow. He's like, I don't know if I found out on, on Facebook or TV. Not sure. Dude. You're a police officer. <laughs> like, this is unbelievable. He was literally still a police officer at the Bardstown Police Department. But um, on the job before, he has been accused of sleeping on the job and of not reporting a teen missing. I'd love to know more about that. I haven't found any more about that. I just heard it uh, from, I don't know, one of the documentaries or the podcast or something I listened to with all the research, right, that I've done. Everything I've read, there was somewhere where they said he slept on the job and didn't report a teen missing. But so, yeah, I, I guess <laughs> if that's anything to go on. But he's just like, nah, I don't know. We are headed. Wow. Okay. Right. Like, I mean, what, what's, what's he said? I don't know that he said much of anything. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to, I guess I'm not really going to bring it up to him because, I mean, I, you know, I know him well. I know he's a good guy and that he wouldn't have anything to do with something sure. like this. So, sure. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and question him about it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I just feel like I know for sure that he had nothing to do with her. You're only a police officer. <laughs> this is why he got fired, because he didn't do anything that a police officer would normally do. Doesn't remember where he was two days ago. Doesn't know when Crystal went missing. Uh-uh. Yeah, no, and he's not going to sit there and question his brother about it, okay? He just knows. He just assumes he's a good guy. He didn't do anything. That's it. His parents or whatever, and I mean, that's just where I'm at. Sure, sure. Um, but I mean, you would... You, you kind of kind of see the flip side of that coin too, don't you? That he's if he's really concerned about her coming home, you might you might he might be talking. You know, man, we got to do something to find her. We got to do this. We got to do that. Yeah. Um, but he's never mentioned anything like that to you. No. What's what's been the one thing he's mentioned to you the most during this whole thing? Nothing stands out. Nothing yeah. stands out. Um, <clears throat> so she goes. And, and I'm kind of working third party here, so so forgive me, and you may have a better idea on the timeline. Uh, Friday night the third, I think, was the last time that anybody said they they saw her, right? Mm -hmm. Where was that at? Do you know? I think somebody said it was at Walmart. Okay. So, Stefan, that was for you. <laughs> Walmart. He's like, I think Walmart. 
which is even that is interesting so how does he know that you know what i mean because now he's like i don't know i saw her last year wasn't sure when she went missing but yet you know that she was last seen at walmart by her family by some relatives right her aunt her, her mother's uh, cousin and aunt right but then she was also seen getting home on video camera which i don't know what nick was doing on that day but he lives literally on the same street so like yeah yeah walmart <laughs> yeah stefan said thank you g <laughs> just for you stefan i'm like i'm gonna make walmart big there yeah last seen at walmart obviously she gets reported missing on the fifth is that right yes the saturday it's it's Sunday. Sunday. yeah she goes missing Sunday, on friday Sunday. saturday's the fourth sunday sunday's the fifth yeah so that's when she gets reported missing mm -hmm. um and he never called you for any advice on what to do? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, would that be unusual? I don't think so. Okay. Um, when did... So did he ever call you after he reported her missing? I'm sure at some point he's called. I mean, I don't really remember what he asked about, but... Okay. Like, was that before? Do you remember when he was interviewed? Oh, yeah. And when, when was that? A few days after the fact. I mean, I... Like a few days after what? A few, days, a few days after everything came out, and the SO started interviewing. Mm-hmm. A few days after the fact. After the fact. Then they're like, what? A few days after what? Because he said he didn't really know that she was even missing. And we know that Brooks Hawk was interviewed on July 8th, which was only five days after Crystal was last seen. And it was the 4th of July weekend. So if you think about it, you know what I mean? When he's like a few days after the fact. Oh, after what fact? A few days after what? Ooh, they got him there a little bit, huh? Uh, did you make a phone call to him when the SO was interviewing him? Yes, I did. Um, matter of fact, I think it was a couple phone calls, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know, kind of got a little little spat on the phone, or it seemed like that to yeah. some people. Yeah. What what what? Why did you call? Well, I, you know, just basically. I mean, Brooks is a really cooperative guy, and you know, obviously at this point you want to be cooperative, but you also want to protect yourself. And I think at a time like this right here, I mean, obviously you wouldn't be thinking exactly straight. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that he was kind of you know protecting himself while that he cooperated with law enforcement, and mm -hmm. so I didn't want him to. I mean, it's just easy to get things confused and stuff, and you know. So, well, I mean, you know, you, you said yourself he's, he's a cooperative guy and you trust him and mm -hmm. to know that he's not involved in this, then what, what reservations would you have about him talking? Well, for one, the, the guy that's interviewing him has openly admitted that he lies in court. Okay. So, I mean, that kind of bothered me a little bit that John was doing it, but, you know, that's just the way it is, you know, I mean. Right. So he's accusing Detective John Snow of lying in court. You know what the Haug family does in court? Um, they record grand jury indictments. <laughs> yes, those grand jury proceedings, mm, they record that and then, you know, to tell each other, what if it beeps and what if it this and don't worry, we need to hear this. Okay, I'm just adding that in there in case you didn't know that, right? You know what, we can't, we can't pick and choose what calls yeah, we get. Yeah, so, yeah. What do you think about uh, your brother? He took a polygraph, didn't he? Mm -hmm. What do you think about the results I, of the polygraph? I, I don't think they would have passed him no matter what, you know, I mean, I think he went up there and did well and... I think that's just what they said, you know, I mean. Well, I mean, why would you say that it wouldn't matter? Yeah, it just it just seems like it doesn't matter what he does or says, you know, everybody's kind of like pointing the finger at him, and I mean, actually, that would be natural, but, sure. you know, I mean, it's just, it, it, at this point, it doesn't matter what he does, you know, he looks like the bad one, so mm -hmm. that's what you don't have to like to do. Well, and that's one of the things we did. We, we called and checked with our little player first, because, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what experience you've had with them. Or none, I mean. You know. We, we use them all the time, and, and all I'd put them up against any, any of them in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're that good. Yeah. And, uh, and they work for the state police. And one week from this point, yeah, actually on July 24th, Nick Houck himself was subjected to that polygraph exam. And we're going to watch the debrief afterwards where they tell him, you didn't pass, it was inconsistent. And the, the questions that are coming back as showing some signs of deception are all the questions about Crystal. And he gets very angry about that. So we are still going to look at that today as well. Okay, so hang in there. They don't work for me. They don't work for you guys here. They don't work mm -hmm. for the Sheriff's Department. They don't have any interest in these cases except to run the polygraph. That's mm -hmm. all that their interest is. 
but uh, you know, just some feedback from them, you know, and you know, it was it, it is what it is. It was inconclusive. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've never even heard of one being inconclusive like that. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but again, yeah. I don't know nothing about them, so sure. that doesn't surprise me. Sure. Well, me and him both can, can, can tell you we've learned a lot more about the polygraph in the last four or five years than we ever thought we would. Mm -hmm. So. So you talked to him on that date, but he was having an interview mm -hmm. after you called him. Yeah, I think I called him once. And I think the uh, task force guys had his phone. And then at some point, I guess they gave him the phone back, and then I got a hold of him. But he'd been up here several hours. You know, it wasn't like I just interrupted right from the very beginning. I thought, what, you know, what the hell have they done? You so know, I don't mean, know. asking the same questions over and over. What have these guys done? How, how did you know he had been up here for several hours? I guess he. Could. I just love how they get him. He like walks himself into all these. They're like, wait, how did you know he was gonna? He was here for a couple of hours because he's like, I don't know, didn't know anything, you know. And then suddenly he's like, oh yeah, like he called him. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, Brooks called him to say he was going to be interviewed by the police. So, oh, then you're going to talk to your brother, the law enforcement officer, right? So then now they, they're catching him in that. Uh, Joni says, I love you, Gizla, but wow, I hate this guy. I'm actually surprised you're covering this case so much. He's a total creep. Obviously, well, we don't know that this one is responsible. This is the brother. So we don't, he's got no involvement whatsoever right now that we know of. Uh, it's speculated he might also be arrested, but we don't know. He's completely innocent at this point. Um, the brother of Brooks, how the brother has been charged with Crystal Rogers' murder and tampering with evidence. So as uh, Joseph Lawson was arrested right before Brooks, how, and he was charged with conspiracy to commit murder and also tampering with evidence. I'm covering the case because my inbox blew up as soon as the arrest uh, was made, and I completely understand why. I mean, it's eight years Eight years that Crystal's family have waited for answers. Like eight years where everybody had the red flag going for the boyfriend. Eight years later, the boyfriend was arrested. That is, whoa. And with all these investigations and so many search warrants and the FBI getting involved in uh, 2020, it's been huge. So yes, and hopefully we can uh, see the trial together, which might actually be in like 2025 or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Rochelle says, we must remember he's trying to save his ass here. So he's either, you know, covering for his brother, maybe having knowledge of what his brother did, or did he help him in any way? Will he later also maybe be charged with, you know, tampering with evidence or things like that? We don't know. We don't know. Right now, just to disclaim, claimer, disclaimer out there, he's a completely innocent, right? He's not even innocent until proven guilty. He's innocent. Okay, we're just checking what he's saying about Brooks, his brother, seeing as Brooks was just arrested and charged with murder and being held on a $10 million bond. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Anonymous Lurker, and thank you for your wonderful emails. You send such kind emails. I really appreciate it. It makes my day. You said, love the way Ms. Gisley lays out facts and highlights red flags <laughs> so we can make an informed decision on what we think instead of mindlessly engage in a witch hunt. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Thank you so much for acknowledging that. Okay, let's continue on. Yeah, I, get, I think he called me. Okay, so he called you before and said, hey, I'm going to the PD, I'm getting ready to get Yeah, I think, uh-huh. And what did you tell him at that point? I said, go for a big cooperative, you know. Say what you mean and mean what you say and just, you know, do the best you can. Did And what did you say to him after when you said he'd been here for a couple hours? What was... What was I just asked him, I said, what, you know, what the hell's going on up there? They're asking the same questions over and over, trying to trip you up. What, what, what's the deal? And he said he was given a... Uh, detailed statement or whatever. I was like, well, that's fine, you know, just, uh, you know, at a time like this, you know, uh, things are spending, you know, just, you got you got to protect yourself while you cooperate, just kind of... Did you ever tell him to leave the interview? No, I didn't tell him to leave the interview. Okay. Did, did you ever tell him to seek legal counsel before talking to the police again? No. Okay. Um, so you, you, you didn't tell him you need to get out of there or you don't no. trust these folks up here? No, I said go ahead and finish your, uh, go ahead and finish your narrative, whatever it is, your written statement that, you, that you're giving them, but just, uh, you know, just, just watch what you're doing, you know, but, you know, be sure you're thinking clearly and cooperate and go along with it. I mean, you know, I guess the, the conundrum I'm kind of having in my own head, because like I said, we're coming at this from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't. Sorry about that. I was just chatting there to Mr. Grizzly because he brought me my charger for my mouse because my mouse has worked so hard it's dying. <laughs> so, Tina, thank you so much. He said, towards Fury Snacks. Oh, my word. He's so spoiled. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And Ursula, uh, Nick, thank you so much for your two Euro Super Sticker as well. I mean, did you guys catch that? How many times in that sentence he said cooperate? Like, just 
say what you mean and mean what you say and cooperate and all that. But five minutes ago, maybe three minutes ago, he said, well, you know, Brooks is a, my brother's a very cooperative guy and he was very worried about that. <laughs> of like, oh no, no, just be careful what you say. You might not be in your right state of mind. And yet here he's saying the reason that they spoke before his interview even happened was because, you know, he just was telling him, just cooperate, okay, do your best. I don't know if that's what he was saying, but okay. Uh, Zonia, welcome to Grizzly Supporter. All right, let's continue on. We don't have a vested interest in it, really one way or the other, because it's, you know, not our, not our baby, but, mm -hmm. you know, if, he, if he's to the point that you're worried about him thinking straight, don't you think he would be talking about it more to you or to your family members about you know, well, well, I wonder where she's at. I wonder where, what happened. Yeah, I, I think people deal with problems in different ways. I mean, I can, you know, I can psychoanalyze it. Sure. But uh, yeah, just different people handle things different. Okay. And is this typically how he handles a stressful situation? I mean, you, you, you've been brothers for yeah, 30 I, some years now, so. Yeah, I mean, I really haven't uh, ran across another situation like this, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know anything compared to. Well, I mean, you know, say, say for example, he's got. You know, three rental properties that need this, this, and this done, and he's got two houses he's got to get put up, or, mm -hmm. or something's got to get done that week. How does he handle that stress? I mean, does he just go forward? Does it crumple up like a like a piece of paper? Well, yeah. I mean, he's got a hundred thousand. What do you think? He goes forward. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and did he just say he's one of the hawks? What do you think? Is that what he's saying? He's like, what do you think? He goes forward. Uh, by the way, he Nick Hawk was thirty six years old at the time of this interview and his brother Brooks was 33 because his brother is 41 now. Yes. Okay. So they're only three years apart. So it's just like, well, you've been brothers for some time now. Yeah. You know, he's known his brother for 33 years at this point. <laughs> okay. And you know, Katie barred the doors. We're getting this done. Is that pretty much how he, you know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Is that yeah. I just, I just, I think he tried to do the best he can. If he can, he just goes on. I mean, Obviously, his stress level is going to be up, you know, with all sure. the rental properties and everything. But I mean, he's been pretty successful. So. Sure. Sure. But I'm not right there walking along with him, so I can't really testify okay. as to what he's actually doing from day to day. Okay. So you all have said you, you you've been out to the farm, and, and do you all go out there together to work, or do you? Or whatever. I mean, he does his thing, and I do mine. Okay. There's a big lake out there with fish. Yeah, we got four wheelers. You know, it's just a place to go to and relax. And how many acres is it? Two, two fifty to three hundred, maybe. Been in the family for a long time, or yeah. Yeah, my grandfather. I don't know what year he bought it, but I mean, it would have had to have been probably fifties or sixties, something like that. Wow, yeah, it's been in the family for, for a long time now. Mm -hmm. um, so when I know you said you get the what, you skid house, is that what you call it? Uh -huh. That's um, where they put them I mean, He built skids for a living, so okay. that's what they stored them in. Gotcha. We just kind of adopted the name. And okay. I mean, do, do each of you have your own area out there, or is it all his? Is it all? I mean, we all use it, but I mean, it's it's his place, you know. Okay. His and mom's. But I mean, do you have like a, a, is it like, is it just communal tools and tractors and things like that, or do you have like a, these are these are next tools. These are roaches tools. No, I mean, I, no. Okay. I didn't know how. You know, some people have like their own individual sections of. Yeah. Of things. How come? How come he owns it with your mom? And I don't know that he owns it with mom. I don't. I, I, don't, mom, I don't know if it's. It, it, I thought it was in mom's name, but he's the one that bought. I don't. I, I don't even get into that. You know. Mm -hmm. I think it's in mom's name though. So, I mean, it, it's, it's your all yours just as much as his, right? Well, no, I mean, I think he paid for it. So, I mean, really, I, it, it's in mom's name. He paid for it. It's kind of a messed up deal. But okay, no, so I mean, it, if it's been the family since the 50s, how would he have paid for it? Did he buy he, he bought it? Bought it. There's, tw there's, 12, there's 12 or 13 brothers and sisters. Oh. Okay. And they sold the farm, and he bought it. Okay, okay. so he, he bought it the rest sense. of the family. Yeah, okay. he, he bought it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so when Grandpa passed, I guess, is that when that all happened, or was it before? Oh, no, Grandpa passed when I was like five or six. Okay. Then my grandmother just died, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Okay. So when, when she passed, then that's when yes. he, he bought out the other brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. So when, when, when was the last time, I guess, you and him were out there together? 
uh, we've been out there within the last uh, couple of weeks, you know, I mean, we run into each other out there, you know, I mean, he... Mm-hmm. Oh, you run into each other. Later, they totally bust him. Like, you literally were out there on July 8th, right after Brooks Huck was interviewed. The two of them headed out there because cameras caught them going out there together and leaving together as well. So listen to what he says here now. He takes stuff out there. You know, he's, he's got a pile of stuff out there that, you know, from his building sites, he'll pile it up out there instead of taking it to the landfill. And I guess where he's too tight to pay the landfill bill, you know. But, but we run into each other, but we're both so busy, we just kind of pass, you know. Uh, what well, you said in the, within the last couple of weeks would it have been before or after Crystal went missing? I've seen him out there after. After? Yeah. Right. Was it, do you specifically remember what day? I don't. Okay. There's a camera out there. I mean, you, you know, mm-hmm. it, it can be checked. Okay. Um, you, and do you have, do you drive your cruiser out there? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's not uncommon for you to drive it out there? No. I use cruiser all the time. Chief wants to, you know, he wants us to use them off duty. That way, it just kind of provides deterrence, and mm-hmm. uh, he loves that. Yep, uh, be seen. Oh, there's police everywhere. I understand. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a kind of kind of the same mentality we have uh, from our commissioner. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, what when you drive the cruiser out there, what are you going out there to do? Just hang yeah, out, or just ride the four wheelers, hike. Okay. So you're not going out there to hook a trail or anything without your cruiser and tow back into town. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, all right, so you said within the last couple of weeks, and it was so we can specifically say in the last week. Um, today's the uh, 15th, and she was last seen on the 3rd. So between the 3rd and the 15th. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you've, you've been out there with him. I mean, did you go out there together? Did you meet him out there? No, I didn't. He, did, he was just having to be out there. Oh, he's like, nah, we didn't go out there together. Liar. Later they call him out on this. They did go out together. <laughs> the cars were seen going there together and leaving together. Oh man. Okay. Um, I mean, did, did you talk to your mom? Did you were, were you at her house? Did you go out fishing? Did you go out yeah, checking yeah. on cattle? What, I mean, what did you do? Four wheeler riding and cattle. I mean, I saw mom. I don't really remember what we talked about, you know. But we just more or less passed off. So I mean, I don't always stop at the house. Okay. Well, when you talked about, you said there's cameras out there. What are you talking about? Well, they said there's one right there at Patty and Lawrence's house. I mean, right as soon as you start at Pascal Ballard Lane, you know, the first house on the right, yes. there's a camera on that house. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I thought you meant on the farm. No. There's cameras. Uh, okay. I guess the, the... He sure does know where the cameras are. Doesn't have much memory of anything, but he knows exactly where the cameras are. There's a camera at a house on that Pascal Ballard Lane, which is where the Howe family farm is, but not on the farm. Okay? I mean, it's no secret that, that your cruiser was, you know, the chief asked you to bring it in. Yeah. Uh, he didn't ask me to bring anything to my house. Okay. Yeah. When, what, what, what do you normally keep in your trunk? What's, what's a normal duty set up? Like, I know ours looks like, you know, evident oh, store exploded in our trunk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, you know, I've got a cardboard box back there, and I mean, it's got, you know, say it's got a flashlight. So we're obviously talking with flashlights in the car. There's uh, many forms. There's a there's a, a PBT fire extinguisher. There's a department issued shotgun in the car. There's a bag up front with all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in those cars. You generally keep all that stuff in your trunk all the time. Some of it's in the trunk. Some of it's up front in the seat. You know, all the all the forms I use every day would be up front. You know. And they're getting to talk about some blanket that's in the back of his trunk, which seems very sus. Uh, Betsy's Barnes says, surely of all people he'd know about the cameras, right? Yes, I agree with you. But then it also has to be consistent with all the other police behavior that he should have. Surely, out of all people, he would know when his potential sister-in-law goes missing. Surely, out of all people, he wouldn't be sleeping on the job, right? Or not reporting a teen missing in the past or, you know, taking his cruiser out to the farm to go fishing, whatever. You know what I mean? Some people can do that, sure, sure, sure. But uh, yeah, surely he should know about the cameras, of all people. But he didn't do anything else. It was anything like a police officer, which is why he got fired in October of 2015, right? So he really offended the other police officers with his behavior. Okay, so continuing on. That's something that attaches to the passenger seat, and it's got all the forms, action report forms, and all that stuff. I use you, that. you take that car home with you. It's a take-home car. Yeah, Nobody so. else uses it unless no. something was to come up. The only person that's ever, the only other person that's used that car is uh, 
Tom Blair, it was issued to him first and then it was passed down to me. Mm -hmm. But that's you know, that's been a while back. Yeah. How long has that been, do you think? That's been a couple of years. Okay. Um so you've been the only one that's driven it in the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Um, do you have stop sticks or anything, stingers? I don't. I mean, yeah, there's some units do. Right. Um, so what you keep in the truck is a cardboard box with some extra stuff in it, fire extinguisher. Hats, just rain jackets. Hats, rain jackets. I mean, I can sit here and try to tell you a ride on others, but I probably didn't come up with half of them. When they, when they uh, took your car, when the PD took your car from your house, what, uh, what was in the truck then? Well, it's this morning grand jury came up that we just all the stuff I just told you. But there was also uh, one other thing I can remember that was there was a, uh, I don't know, just a, just a regular blanket for moving. You know, where I moved from 104 Glenview Drive to where I'm at now, I took the blanket that was there and I just put it between furniture to keep it from marring up the furn, you know, mm -hmm. the finish on it. As it went down the road, I guess it was going to jingle around and. I mean, it didn't in the truck of your cruiser. Mm -hmm. You had furniture in the truck. No, no, I didn't. Uh, uh, no, what I did. I, I got the blanket at the farm, I used it, and then I was going to take it back in a few days, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. So it's sitting there in the trunk, you know, but no, I used, I used my trailer and truck. Okay. So instead of putting it in the truck, you put it in the trunk of the cruiser, though? Yeah, I was going to return it back out there, so I just uh, took put it in the trunk, and then when I was out there, I was just going to return it to where I found it. Did you just not never get around to it? I didn't. Where did where you said you got it from the farm? Where specifically did you get it from? The skid house. There's several of them down there. Where where at specifically in the skid house? Uh, and when you walk in the front door, right there to the right hand side. Okay. Do the other blankets look just like that blanket? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I mean it'd be easy to to say look, there's still two blankets here. And that's the same blanket yeah. as what was there. I think so. Now. Now, were, were all those things in, in your trunk when they took the car mm -hmm. other than the blanket? So nothing, what, what was missing, nothing was missing out of your trunk as far as your fire extinguisher it was in there? Everything, everything was in there with the blanket. Okay, so everything was in your trunk just like you carry it when you go to mm -hmm. work except the blanket was in there with it? Yeah. So do, you, do you remember going out? Keep in mind they're asking a lot of questions about the blanket at this point because the back of his cruiser lit up with luminal tests and he can't explain that the farm the even the july the 8th i don't but i very easily could have been out there that was that was incidentally the same night that your brother was <laughs> same night your brother was interviewed by police yeah wednesday july mm -hmm. uh, you said there was cameras out there on that that house. They got him now. Uh, would have the, the cameras would have caught your your car following Brooks. Wouldn't on surprise the way out to the wouldn't to surprise the, me. But uh, you said generally, you know, you would just go out to the farm and you would just meet him there. On this occasion, you all both. Well, usually, yeah. I, usually I don't meet him there. I mean. You know, he's just out there doing his own thing, and yeah. then I go out there and do my own thing. I mean, well, I mean, if that's what happened that night, it would have been just perfect timing that you're following right behind him, mm -hmm. and that you just so happened to meet him at the farm. I see, I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so think back. Was there a time that you all both went out there at the same time for a specific reason? Not that I recall. So it just would have been coincidence that your car was following right behind his truck when it passed by that camera going to the farm. Yeah, that's happened before. Mm -hmm. So this night in particular, it would have been, you would have left after dark. Y'all came together and, and you would have left after dark. Do you remember he, that night? Easily could have. Okay. I mean, do, I mean, do you remember it? No, I really, I don't. <laughs> he remembers everything about the blanket, but he doesn't remember going there with his brother or leaving at the same time. That he just doesn't recall. Okay. So if you're only joining the stream now, welcome to the stream. We are looking... Uh, in detail at Crystal Rogers case there's been an arrest made after eight years and it was uh, an arrest of her former boyfriend Brooks Hauk and now this is his brother who was a police officer at the time a lot of sus things uh, surrounding him a couple of red flags so we're just looking at this interview as well because we've done a deep dive on Brooks Hauk's interview um, I haven't seen an interview for Joseph Lawson that doesn't seem to have been released. <laughs> I wonder if there is one. You know, that's the other guy that was arrested. So welcome. Thank you for spending your time here with me. If you are here live on a Sunday with us, really appreciate it. We're going to be here for a while. We're looking at 
This entire interview that happened on July 15th of 2015, Crystal Rogers was last seen on July 3rd of 2015. They believe that's when uh, she was murdered and Brooks Hauk has been charged with her murder and tampering with evidence. So that is what we are looking at. The other guy was charged with Joseph Lawson, conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence. And there was actually a guy arrested in 2015, Danny Singleton. We looked at that in episode one. I hope you'll check out my playlist and especially look at the first episode, that deep dive that we did, the timeline. It'll give you a really good overview of the case, okay, if you want to. Uh, welcome, the earth laughs in flowers. So, but um, Danny Singleton was only, he was arrested on perjury charges because he lied to a grand jury about his whereabouts on that very night, Friday uh, the 3rd of July of 2015. And then he spent eight months in prison and was released with two months of probation. And that's that. Okay. MKO says lots of gaps and then lots of info. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to describe it. And thank you so much uh, for your sticker. So we'll still be here for quite some time. Uh, I'm sure the stream will be almost four, probably four hours long today. So I hope that you are going to be here with us throughout. All right. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, become part of this community. We'd love to have you here. If you're just lurking, don't feel shy. Come say hello in chat. We are a very friendly bunch. Okay. The Grizzlies are the nicest and the mods are the best. Okay. So, and then if you haven't yet liked and shared, please do that now. It really helps others know I am live right now or others who haven't seen, you know, any commentary on this. I know this is from eight years ago, but uh, the commentary, if you, if you want to share that, please do that. Okay. Let's continue on as now they've busted him. I'm like, well, you know those cameras you talked about? Yeah, they show that you were out there with your brother and you left with your brother on the very day that he was interviewed by police. That very interview that he interrupted and told his brother to get the hell out of, even though he denies telling his brother to leave. Okay, we continue on. Okay. Um, do you remember, did you all, were you all in the skid house? Were you, were you at your mom's talking? No, I mean, I can't even remember what he was doing, I mean. It was the 8th, it's the 15th, I don't... I mean, do you, do you, do you remember being out here, out there with him at the farm that evening? I think I remember seeing him out there. Okay, so you didn't... You, you're, you're saying you didn't intentionally follow him out there? And did you all leave, do you remember leaving together? Mm-hmm. Why did, why did he leave earlier or you leave earlier, do you remember? I don't have any idea. Did you leave first or did he leave first? I don't know. But you remember, I mean, it's just been a week ago. Mm -hmm. Driving down past the Ballard, your car behind his truck. I mean, you got to turn it in the farm there. <clears throat> you remember, you, can, you, can you go back and put that in your head, just driving down that road and you see your brother in front of you? What happened after that? I can. Let's, let's go back. You remember talking to your brother on the phone when he was up here, right? Mm-hmm. What did you do after you got off the phone with him? I really don't know. Okay. Do you smoke? <laughs> I really don't know. Okay, well, what they know is that you literally got in your car. <laughs> you got in your car and followed your brother to the Hauk family farm. And he's like, mm-mm, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> that was a week ago. No. Chew about it? No. Drink? Nope. No. Drink coffee? No. Nope. Yeah, they Guys, he doesn't drink coffee. No coffee. <laughs> I know some people don't drink coffee, okay? I don't know if he drinks tea or what, but I, I can't imagine a police officer who doesn't drink coffee. I'm like, that's a red flag. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, that's sarcasm. But like, whoa, no drinking, no smoking, no coffee? <gasps> what? What's that? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Working all the time, like... I understand that completely. Um, so, it, it would be possible that y'all were out at the farm together that night. You just don't remember specifically. You said the eighth. Yeah, could have been. Okay. Did you work on the eighth? Last Wednesday. You work on Wednesdays. What day did you take the car? Because that would I haven't been. It was Thursday. Thursday the ninth. I don't think I could. If I was at the farm on Wednesday, then I couldn't have worked. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. So, what days are you generally off? <laughs> Let's see. So, like one week, I'll be off uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come back Monday. Work Tuesday, off Wednesday. Okay. 
work Thursday, Friday, so it's it's hard to keep up with. Sure. I mean, it's a mess. Well, <laughs> well, how, how, do, how do you keep up with it? I've got a, a schedule. Like you literally don't know your own days off, dude. He's like, it's just naming. He's just naming days now. <laughs> oh man, yes, hilarious. Says coffee would interfere with his naps. Yeah, because he was accused of sleeping on the job quite a few times. Oh man. Go to home. Okay. Yeah, I've got to. I've got to leave my schedule still today, even mm -hmm. five six months later. Now, what time? Do you, what's your normal shift time end? Seven o'clock. So, so, so say if you were, if you went out to the farm. Eight eight thirty. Well, then I could have. Oh, then I could have swung that. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so it's safe to say that if you were driving your cruiser out to the farm, you weren't working. Oh, most definitely. Because you don't leave the city to go out to the farm no, while you're no, working, no, right? I wouldn't do that. Okay. So you wouldn't do that. So you would have been off. That was remember back. That was the same day that he was up here being interviewed. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would have been Wednesday. If he was up here interviewed, you had phone conversations with him before he came up here. Uh, he told you he was coming up here, and then after a couple hours, you called, checked on him, you know, told him to protect himself, whatever it was, the conversation that you mm -hmm. had. And then after that phone call, within two hours, both of y'all were driving to the farm on the camera. Mm -hmm. okay. So we know all that. Mm -hmm. There's no debate about that. We know that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when he knows he's uh, in a corner, literally, <laughs> literally backed into one. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's it. That's all he can say is, mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much, Dragonfly. What we need to know is why you all both went down to the farm. Cause I know, I know it's going to be hard for you to remember a week ago, mm -hmm. but I can remember a week ago if I'm thinking about a conversation I had with my brother and something like this going on, because yeah. this doesn't go on all the time. So, I mean, we're going to call it like it is. Mm -hmm. you, is it, you don't want to remember or can you remember? I, I can't remember. Okay. Because this is what's happened. You made a phone call. He was up here within two hours of him leaving here. Both of y'all were on the road on the way to the farm and the camera shows that. Mm -hmm. Time and date stamped. Phone call. Time and date stamped. You're out there. What, what went on while you were out there at the farm? Yeah, if I knew, I'd tell you. I mean, I wish I could give you a detailed written statement. I don't know. I guess it's kind of jump back to, to the cruiser here for a minute. Do you, is there any reason that there'd be any blood in your in the trunk of your cruiser? No reason at all. So you don't transport any biological evidence on a regular basis? No. Uh, when was the last scene that you had somebody that was bleeding? How long has it been? It's maybe a wreck or something like that. That's been a long time ago. Okay. I mean, we're there's no. I can tell you, there's no blood in front of my cruiser. I can. I can guarantee you that. Okay. Now, what about on anything that was in your trunk? Would there have been blood on anything that was in your no. trunk? There's no way. Absolutely none. Now, what about the blanket that was in your trunk? No way. <laughs> He's like, no way. Uh, Kenita, thank you so much for this. You, a 911 dispatcher, their schedules are like ours. Two days on, two days off, three days on, two days off, two days on, three days off. And then you say, so it's difficult to keep, keep up with it when you aren't used to it. That I understand. But he was a police officer for like nine years already. You know? Okay. So, continuing on there. And you picked up that blanket when? I don't know exactly. It was uh, That's the main uh two three four days after you know uh they, they filed the missing person report okay so a couple of days a couple of days after they filed the missing persons reports when you picked up that blanket used it to haul the stuff then put it back into your freezer i think so so that would have been how many days you think the blanket was in your cruiser truck before thursday when they took your cruiser I hate, I hate to even put a number on it. I mean, I, I really don't know. One, two, three, ten. How many things? I'm not even put a number on it. I, I can't. I, you know. But you know, I mean, do you know for a fact it was after they filed the missing person report that you picked it and linked it up? I don't even know that for a fact. Well, when did you move the furniture? I, you know, I've got a dozen rental properties. I've been moving stuff out of, you know, the garage over there for two or three weeks now. You know, I, I've got the garage where? 104 Glenview Drive. What did, how long have you been out of 104 Glenview? You said you're, are you? Just a few days. Okay. 
Was there a certain day you had to be out of there by? Mm -hmm. What was that day? Uh, July the... I wish I could get the exact well, date. Well, who, who gave you the date to get out? The guy that bought it. Okay, so there's paperwork that shows he takes possession of it on a certain day. Mm -hmm. How many days before that did you move that furniture out? We can reference that. Maybe what furniture out now? This all my furniture? Whatever you use the blanket for. Uh, I would say, I'd say a few, at least a few days before, you know. So a few is two, maybe? Is that, is that what you would term that? That's what I would guesstimate. Okay, so say you had to be out by July 9th, then a few days before that, or something like that? It sounds good to me. I mean, I, I, really, I really don't know. What was the guy's name that bought the property? Uh, Mike Ballard. And Mike Ballard, is is there paperwork on that? Did you go through a realtor? No, we, I sold it for sale by owner. Okay. And uh, did you do a contract or did you do a deed transfer? Yeah, we did a contract on it. Okay. Do you have a copy of the contract somewhere? Uh, I do somewhere. So there'll be some way we can reference oh, it. Yeah. I mean, he claims to also have rental, a rental property business. He has a business. His brother also has a business. Okay, so this guy is a police officer and has a rental property business. We had an LLC, but then he dissolved it because he figured he didn't even need that. He could just rent out the properties. We could speculate maybe just for cash like his brother did, right? Because that's what Crystal told her mom the day before she went missing is that she found out that Brooks was renting out a lot of these properties cash, okay? Avoiding taxes type of thing. So she was starting to uncover some of uh, the shady business going on. And so here he can't remember exactly when he had to move out by and also why did he have to move out and who bought the property and why at that point? You know what I mean? Like right after Crystal Rogers goes missing, he moves out from the same street. He lived on the same street as his brother, but yet claims like he hardly ever saw them, doesn't know who, you know, hardly knows who Crystal is by the sounds of it. Ooh, it's all very hectic and they're really focusing on that blanket, huh? Because there was some potential evidence on there. So let's continue on. Did you, did you tell anybody that you were on the, even the eighth year with your girlfriend online and you didn't go anywhere? Did I tell somebody I was with my girlfriend online? That you, you, were, you were home with your girlfriend online on the, the evening of July the 8th and didn't go anywhere? Last Wednesday, no. I don't, I don't remember that. Okay. Um, who have you talked to about this so far? I mean, obviously we're talking right now. Just the people of the grand jury. Okay. That's the, the only other person you've talked to about this investigation mm -hmm. is the grand jurors and us three people in this room. Yeah. Very little with Chief, I mean. Mm -hmm. Did you, have you talked about it with your girlfriend? Very little. I mean, like I said, we didn't really hang out with Crystal or anything, so I mean, I haven't went into any, any detail with her. Well, I mean, is she, I know, I know the typical woman is going to ask 10 million questions around something big that you were. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we're both married, we know how our wives are. What about this? What about this? What about that? Really, Amber's really not like that. Not like that. No. Okay. Um, Do you talk to any of the other officers here? I mean, y'all are obviously I've been, I've been off work. He just put me on paid leave or it's kind of administrative. Mm -hmm. I mean, did, did he tell you not to talk to anybody about the investigation, or is it just, do, do you not socialize with a whole lot of people from work outside of work, or? No, I mean, I don't see a lot of them at work. Um, I know, you know, with us, the guys that we work with, we're, we're talking on the phone all the time, we're, we're real social with each mm -hmm. other, is that just not the case here? Or? Yeah, I haven't talked to anybody about it. Okay. But just, it. just in general, I mean, are you? Are you social with, with the guys you work with, like yeah. Jason Ellis? Did you talk to him a lot when oh, you worked with him? Well, yeah, I mean, I talked to all the guys, but I mean, it's not like we hang out on the weekends. Damn, they just fight him with that question straight. Jason Ellis, did you talk to him? They worked the same shift. I can't believe they just went in with that question while they're doing all the other questions as well. Because Jason Ellis's murder is still unsolved. So in Bardstown, Kentucky, with a population of about 13,000 people. Small town, nice community in general, right? Uh, wow, there's five unsolved murders. 
so far. There's pro probably more, but five that we know of that may or may not be connected to this case. So Jason Ellis, we went over the whole timeline. So if you want timeline and details of all of that chronologically, check out the first live stream that we did. It's on the playlist for you, okay? But Jason Ellis was also a police officer who worked the same shift as uh, Nick Houck. So they're saying that now that they have the gun, the prosecution now believes they have the gun that was used to kill Tommy Ballard, Crystal's dad. Well, and Nick, this guy, Nick is the one who sold the gun using a fictitious name to an undercover agent. So that's interesting that they now believe they have that gun, right? And so I wonder now if they would be able to solve Jason Ellis's murder as well. But it's interesting that they go right in there and ask him about that. Together, anything like okay. that? So, but when you're here at work, you talk about oh, stuff. Oh, most definitely. Any, is, uh, any of the officers or anybody come and approach you and ask you questions about the case? You know, uh -huh. of knowing that you're kind of close to the, they have, to the they family. Have, they haven't asked. Huh. And you haven't, to, you have or you haven't talked to your brother about this case? I haven't. With very little to nothing. So, I mean, what, how did the conversation go when he said he called you and said, I'm on my way up here to the PD to be interviewed? I can't remember, I can't remember how he stated it. He just, I guess, just said they were going to interview him. And that may have been like his second I mean, did he, seem, did he seem nervous? Was he scared? Was he asking for advice? Was he confiding in you? Like, what was he? Brooks, the same old Brooks. Well, I mean, if you don't talk that much generally and your brother calls you, there's got to be some reason he's yeah. calling you. You know, I mean, he, he calls me from time to time. It's not like we just completely ignore one another, mm -hmm. but we don't just hang out all the time. But if he called you, you know, that day, what would what, what did he say? I had no idea. I mean, you're, you're the only one that was on the phone line with him that time, right? Just you and him? No memory. No, there wasn't anybody else. It wasn't a three-way call. It was no, his, no. his phone calling you, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't remember anything that was said at all. He didn't say, hey, should, is there something I should do? You know, should I wear a nice shirt? Should, you know, Brooks has got should I fix my hair? You know, that kind of thing. Brooks, no, nah, Brooks, he's just uh, kind of construction worker. I mean, he's coming right on in here. I mean, he's not a, he's not like that. But I mean, he, he obviously knows that you know more about police work than what he does. Well, obviously. So he's, you know, if you've got a question about how to frame something and, and it's something he's better at than you, you're going to call him and ask him, right? Yeah, but Brooks didn't have anything to hide. I mean, no, he hadn't asked me anything like that. You know, Brooks, Brooks hadn't changed any, you know. So he was just saying, hey, if you need a, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm going to be up here at the PD doing an interview. Kind More of or thing. less. But then you, you called him back because you were just worried because you hadn't. Well, I really wasn't worried. Did he say, I'm gonna, I'll call you when I'm done? Is that what he no, said? No, he didn't say call me when he was done. <clears throat> No, I mean, it's not that I was really worried. I just, like I said, he's just a, Brooks is a really cooperative person, and with things spinning like they are, I just wanted to be sure that, you know, things were done the right way. Sure. Yeah, see, he's a really cooperative person. Oh, but, okay, but then, <laughs> so you were protective over him because he's a really cooperative person, but yet earlier you said that you, the call was to say, remember to cooperate. Yeah, okay, that's a contradiction. I know you made mention of one officer here that, that you think might not be, you know, the most trustworthy person in, in your words. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there, I mean, is there anything else that goes on around here? I mean, is the whole department like that, or is it just? Oh uh, no, I mean, we've got a really good department. Okay. I can't knock the department at all. In the sheriff's department as well. Yeah, there's a lot of good guys over there. So I mean, you obviously had some reservations about something because you called him. It, it was just that one officer. That's the only reason why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just like how, I said, how did you how did you know that Snow was the one interviewing him, not one of us? Well, I, think, I just assumed that I guess since he'd been interviewed before, that you know, I mean, he was the one handling it. So, I mean, there's other good officers here. What if it was like Kaminsky or somebody else? I mean, I, would, yeah, I don't think I'd been that much worried about it. Uh, so you you knew that Snow was going to be the one interviewing him because he again he's so busted. Because earlier he was saying why he called his brother was because. You know, he's accusing Detective Snow of lying on the stand before in court. And yet now they're saying, well, how did you know it was going to be Detective Snow? <laughs> it could have been anyone. And he's like, um, OK, well, I assume because he had been interviewed before that because they went to his house, to Brooks' house, um, 
before they'd actually interviewed him officially in the interview room that we watched yesterday, right? That was on July 8th. But on the Sunday, after Sherry had reported uh, Crystal missing, Sherry and Tommy and her brother Casey, they reported Crystal missing. Then the, the police went to go speak to Brooks Hauk. And of course, Detective Snow was one of the detectives that spoke to him. So now the, now Nick is pretending like that's why. It's because Detective Snow was there. But they're like, how do you know who was going to interview him that day? <laughs> very, very smart, right, of them. Uh, Barrett Larson, thank you so much. You say thanks for all your work, Gidler. You're the best. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. He told you that Snow called him, is that what you're saying? I can't even really remember that. I just, he just said he was going to be interviewed, and I guess since Snow had interviewed him before, that I just assumed that he'd be the one doing the interview again, so. All right, hang tight. Let's go check on something real quick, and we'll be right back. Okay. Right. now it's back to I don't recall uh, for those of you asking we're about an hour in as you can see here and we've got two hours and 22 minutes worth of stuff to watch which includes this interview the Nick Hauk interview and after this we're going to see just a few little clips uh, from the police chief the former police chief uh, McCubbin that fired him just short clips and then after that we're going to watch how defensive Nick Hauk gets after his polygraph exam is inconsistent. Ooh, he gets very feisty then. He's not calm like this then. So that one is 45 minutes long. This one, I think it's about, it was about 90 minutes or so. But anyway, so we still got, we've still got a long way to go. It's, it's a, it's a nice Sunday here together. If you're watching live with us, if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. And let's continue on. I don't know, waterline bus, anything like that mm -hmm. you need help with? No. You remember him coming over on Friday, just this past Friday, a couple days ago? I don't. And you didn't meet with him on that Friday? I'm not that I'm aware of. Do you remember going over to Brooks's house and unloading some stuff out of your trunk into your mom's car? I don't know that I've unloaded anything from Chunky Crazy. Now, there's a, you, you've got neighbors that have, you know, a spot that they can actually see your cars in the driveway, right? Mm -hmm. Look at his Over face. in that area. Now, a, a neighbor stated that they saw you taking something out of your trunk and placing it in your mom's car. Uh, that didn't happen. Nothing. I mean. I love how it's just like, that didn't happen. <laughs> They're like, you actually have neighbors that can see when, and now he was at his brother's house loading something in the trunk of his car i think they're saying it was on around, around the 10th or something but he's like nope that didn't happen like okay so the cameras or the neighbors nothing i think it was just the neighbors i don't think it was um eyewitnesses but he's like no that didn't happen <laughs> okay you didn't even take a fire extinguisher out or anything nope okay where would the fire extinguisher be if it wasn't in your trunk when they took your car should have been in the trunk of the car I don't think it is, is it? I don't think there's a fire extinguisher back there. It wouldn't, nothing would be in your mom's car out of your police cruiser right now if we went and popped it. Well, okay. you know, if we went and looked, if she let us. Not a thing. So, is, going back to that the Friday night, is there, would there be anything on your phone or your phone records that would show a call between you and Brooks at 8.30 p.m. on Friday? Your guess is good as mine. You, you won't let me check it. 
Okay. So do you, do you have your phone with you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Where is, is it home? It is. Okay. Would you would you be willing, willing to let us download it? Put it on the cell phone? Just, just copy the contacts of the phone. Yeah. Call the phone. It'd, it'd take, take an hour or two. But, I mean, it obviously wouldn't be right this minute. We don't have a cell right here with us. But no. No. And you don't have a cell phone with you. Okay. Doesn't have a cell phone with him. What kind of phone do you have? iPhone. Is it a four, five, six, six plus? I think it's four or five. Got a passcode to it. Mm -hmm. The charger is it? Is it the wider charger? Or is it the thinner charger? About that wide. That one. Yeah. So probably five, five, or four, five and six use the hot charger. Seem to want to do that. Yeah. So probably four. But it doesn't have a passcode on it. Mm -hmm. okay. Going back to the eight when you called your brother when he was up here interviewing, um, what was the tone of that conversation? Was it just a kind of like what we're talking here, real calm, collected? No, I mean, I, you know, I probably raised my voice a little bit. I mean, I, you know, I obviously wanted John to know that I called up there. You know, I mean, he's sitting right there, right there beside him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to hide, you know, like I said, I wanted to be sure things were getting done right and sure. I mean, he'd been up here for hours and hours and I wanted I wanted him to cooperate and everything, but I wanted him to protect himself also. Okay. I mean, if, if you, you raised your voice to the point that we could sit there and basically hear word for word on the recording. On the audio recording. On the audio recording. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's how much you raised your voice. I mean yeah. that that's a little bit more than raising your voice. It almost sounded like a shouting match. I, mean, I don't really see it that way, but I mean, I, I wanted him to listen, you know, I mean. Okay. So that, that night after you called your brother and told him to leave, or told him to, to be careful or, or take care of himself, et cetera, et cetera, um, did you all meet up anywhere? Not that I recall. I don't think we did. I... Well, the... You know, you talked about the videos out there at your mm -hmm. at the house on the corner of Pasco Ballard. Mm -hmm. um, that video does show you and your brother going out there, arriving at the same time, right behind each other. Mm -hmm. We got witnesses that said they remember passing both of you, you know, on 49. Mm -hmm. You know, one right, you he was in front, and you were behind. Him. We didn't make a special trip out there together. If that's what you're getting at, I mean, I mean, that's just that's just a. Just a coincidence that y'all showed up at the same time mm -hmm. to go out there. You know, and and then y'all were out there till right at like eleven twenty two. You you start out and stop down at the end of the drive, back back up, and then y'all leave out together. What's that mean? You said I, I backed up or mm -hmm. you, you you started down the drive and stopped and then backed back up the hill a little bit and then I guess I don't know if you're waiting for him or what, but y'all left together. I, I don't remember that, but well, I mean, we, know, we know you wrote that you arrived together and mm -hmm. you left together. We know that. Mm -hmm. Which kind of leads us to, to the issue with the cruiser here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got we got some issues. Okay. Okay. You, you're aware that when the cruiser was oh now he's really back to the corner like we got some issues. Yep, we got some issues, and he's like oh, okay. <laughs> taken from you that, that it was actually taken to the Kentucky State Police Forensic Central Laboratory. That's what I assume, you know, cheap mm -hmm. dead now. Okay. So why it's at the lab, they, they, have you ever heard of luminol? Yeah. You ever been to any mm -hmm. kind of criminal investigation? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you know what luminol is used for? To find blood. Okay. Or other bodily fluids. Bodily okay. fluids. Uh -huh. Okay. So we all excrete bodily fluids, sweat, you know, vomit anything, you know, mm -hmm. uh, saliva, all that is, is what would fluoresce. Why would, why would your trunk look like a Smurf if they sprayed it? Why would it fluoresce? The I mean, it would look like Chernobyl. There's a couple spots in your trunk in that blanket, I mean, just lit up like Chernobyl. Why, why, why would that? There, there's not going to be any blood in the trunk. Okay, okay. well, I did not say blood. I'm talking about other bodily fluids. I don't have you blood. Know, um, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be anybody. So when backed into a corner on this, especially about the blanket and them saying the luminol test, which would react to not just blood, but other bodily fluids as well. They just named a whole bunch of examples. A police officer would usually know that, right? But he's like, there's not going to be blood there. There's no blood. And they're like, yeah, yeah. But we've just said other 
things, right? Saliva, sweat, vomit, all kinds of other bodily fluids could make that blanket and that trunk light up like that. Now they're asking him why, and he's just like, you know, really defensive and like, I don't know, like that just, just it's again one of those, like it didn't happen, okay? <laughs> bodily fluids in the trunk. I mean, there, there's only one way bodily fluids can get into a trunk, that's if a body's near by, right? You know, that's what I would assume. Okay. Um, or unless, you know, somebody puked in your trunk or something like that. I don't think right. that happened. Don't think that's the case. So. Somebody peed your trunk or... No. So why, why, why would that be if that blanket, when they looked at it at the lab? I've got no explanation for that. I don't have, I mean, none whatsoever. Nobody has access to that car but you, you drive it. You put the blanket in there, you said that. If there's something on that blanket or in that car, you're the person that has something to do with it, correct? Well, I would assume, but okay. I mean, there, there, shouldn't be, now, there shouldn't be anything in the trunk of the car. I mean, I don't know if, if somebody made that up or what the deal is, but I... I mean, well, we're not in the business yeah, of making stuff up. Yeah, we I don't, mean, you know, that's not, that's not what we do. I'm just telling you, our job is to find out what happened. It's not to, to change the course of events as they happened. It's to find out what happened. So we can't change what happened in that trunk. We can't change uh, that the test showed that there's bodily fluids in that trunk area. What what we need to do is we need to find out why that's the case. And, and you, you, you see where we're coming from now. I mean, we've got two of you getting there together. You know, you say it's a coincidence. Two of you leaving together. The next day, your your cruiser is is found with this you know the stuff in the trunk and it's taken to the lab. It's got bodily fluid in it. I mean, I, I wish I knew what to tell you guys. You guys just got to test that and, and let me know when you find out. I, there's no reason anything should be in the trunk of that car. Did, did you, did your brother ever call you and say that he'd done something to Crystal? No, he did not. Because here, here's the case. The case is, you know, you're a police officer, we're police officers. Right. We all know how the, this job works. You know, I don't believe in coincidence after having this job. I don't know if you still do or not. Not, not much. I, I don't, because you know that when somebody is sitting here talking to us and telling us that everything's a coincidence and we have either physical evidence or video or something to, to prove that that's mm -hmm. not the fact, we, we kind of stop believing in coincidence. Yeah. Now, that, that's the case of where we're at right here. You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's too much linking you and him leaving the, when he leaves the police department going down the road, both arriving together, both leaving together, there is some reason why you all went out to that farm. Now, I, I'm not a big you know, fan of amnesia either because I've heard that 20 or 30 times a week when I'm talking to people, so I don't believe people just lose their memory. Mm -hmm. I think people forget. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a big fan of amnesia either. <laughs> I talk to people a lot, okay, they're always forgetting <laughs> the things that they really need to remember there. You know, and I was like, mm-hmm. What they don't want to talk about. They, they, they hide those things and, and sometimes it's a good person that does that because they're trying to protect their family mm -hmm. or they're trying to protect their self but you know what there's also bad people in this world Most and, definitely. And, and those bad people intentionally lie and intentionally use those excuses you know to make it harder for the police to find out what really happened because they're deep down they're just a bad person oh, I agree with you I so I don't think that we're dealing with a type of person here that's a bad person I think we're dealing with with somebody like you that's coming forward and trying to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. But then again, I think you're somebody that would protect your family in, the, in a case like this. And if your family told you something, that you would try to protect them to the best of your abilities. And Especially if, since you're I mean, a police she, officer, okay? She's, she's got but, kids. I mean, there, there's no way that I would cover this up for him. Okay, well, I mean, but you know, we, we all start taking, we, we all have family. We know how family bonds run. I mean, you know. It's interesting how he says, there's no way that I would cover this up for him. I mean, it's just words, but it's interesting how he words it. Instead of saying, um, I would never cover anything up for him, or if he did anything to Crystal, I wouldn't be covering up for him. He's like, look, man, I, there's, there's kids. I wouldn't be covering up this for him, right? Family's family. You know, mm -hmm. You've got your work family, and you've got your real family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's things that we, the people have done in the name of family that, that have been in, in positions that you know, you would just kind of scratch your head to think, well, why would they do that? But it was all out of love, you know, you know, for the family. You yeah. and your brothers, you grew up together, you probably rumbled on the, round, on the ground together, knocking each other's heads off. Yeah. I mean, we, I've got a brother, that's what we did growing up. We, we took turns beating the fire out of each other. Yeah. But, 
at the same point, we're, we're, we're at a point here, like he said, coincidences, we throw them out the window. You know, not knowing exactly what time you sit down to ate dinner yesterday, that's one thing. Not remembering mm -hmm. that you ate dinner at all. That you ate dinner at all, that's, a, that's another That's thing. a different thing. Yeah. You know, we, we've, and then you add that on top of the biological evidence that's, that's been located in the trial. That's what, we're not, we're not that's what you harms me right there. I mean, I just can't, I just can't believe that. Well, we're not, we're not asking you hard questions here as far as, oh, I'm, I'm not asking you, did you pull in at 7.22 p.m. on the other night? No. I'm asking you, hey, last week, on Wednesday, a week from today, do you remember going out to the farm? Do you remember arriving with your brother? Do you remember leaving with your brother? What did you do while you were out there? Those aren't hard questions. And I, and I, don't, re I don't remember that. Okay. I mean, I don't. I mean, was it, is, it, is it just such a routine that you go out there and just arrive at the same time? And We both go out there a lot, you know. I mean, it is a place we hang out, you know, quite frequently. Sure. And, and, we, and you've told us that, and we believe that. Mm -hmm. but, but, but we're asking you specific days a week ago okay and that was have you been out to the farm since then or is that the last time you've been out to the farm since the eighth since mm -hmm. yes a week well, ago sure. last wednesday i'm sure i've been out there since then okay have, have you and your brother both met and now he remembers that date you know he's like since the eighth i know they brought it up but he's like oh since the eighth yeah i'm sure i've been out there since then out there since no the last okay so we're asking you about the last time that you and your brother met at the farm all right, we're not asking you for specifics about it. We're just asking if you remember both arriving there, what you did while you were there, and when you left, and, and why I, you were I, there. I, I don't. I, mean, I, I really don't. I'm, we're trying to make it as easy as we can for you as far as asking you questions. Mm -hmm. Because from, from our perspective, I mean, we're not talking about just, you know, coincidence, y'all showing up at the same time. I mean, your brother's subject of a police investigation right now that's made national news. I'm telling you, I, if my brother was under the microscope right now, I would remember everything that he did, everything that we talked about, everything that sometime we did together. You know, sometimes I can't remember what happened two days ago, you know. Well, I mean, and, and, I'm, I'm being 100% honest with you. And, and, being, and, and I understand that, but being a police officer, you know, we... we exactly. Being a police officer. Hello. You kind of have to remember things. Yeah, you know, if you didn't write it down, if you didn't, you know, remember it, it didn't happen, right? Well, I, but I write everything down. If you look at my notes, I mean, it's all written down. I've got it. When well, I go testify in court, I mean, I, I've got the report right in front of me, you know. Sure. But good. sometimes, I, I mean, I can't, I, don't, I couldn't be what I did two days ago. But, you know, work is one thing, you know, your family is another. Mm -hmm. If something happened that was close to my family, if something happened where that I was affected by it, because you know you're affected by this, whether or not you think you are, oh, you right. are. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. you're, you're wrapped up in this. Even even if, if there's no indication of anything else, your name is the same as his, right? I agree with okay. that. And you do police work, right? Yes. And this is a police investigation. So there ain't no way you're going to be able to stay out of this completely, right? No. Okay, so you ought to be thinking in your head, how am I going to save face with the guys I work with? How am I going to, you know, explain this to my family? How you, You've got to have those things going through your head. If you're, if you're a normal functioning person like we all are, then, then it's natural for us to feel that way. It's natural for us to be inquisitive, you know, especially as police officers. You know, we always want to know what's going on. We, we're, we're like the neighborhood watch 24-7, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the way we are. Now, <laughs> He's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I sure do, damn, I would. Wow. So, yeah, he was fired in October of 2015. It's not, it's not that hard to see why, right? Never mind telling his brother to get out of his interview. Oh, dear. He just can't remember anything. Just can't remember. Two days ago, but he's got notes. And remember, his brother Brooks also had a lot of notes. And he referred to them a lot. He brought all those notes. And any time that, you know, the questions got a little bit too much for Brooks, he was like, look, look, if you just look at my notes, everything there will just explain it for you. You know? <laughs> I just can't expect that you would forget all those details. You know, being as you're a police officer and sitting here talking to you and seeing how you interact with people, I I just find that very hard to believe. Well, I'm, I'm sorry you find it hard to believe. That's the way it is. I mean, it's just, that's, that's it. I mean, I mean, a month ago, I would expect you not to remember something. But a week ago, with all this national, national media attention and all these questions probably being asked by people out here on the street and all these rumor mills going around, you know, I would expect you to remember that. But at the same time, you know, I mean, he hadn't really came to me, you know, I mean, I mean, you've talked. You talked to him that day. You know, well, he called I'm, you. I'm sure we talked briefly, but like I said, I mean, we haven't really discussed anything, so therefore, I don't have a lot of details to give you. But we're not asking you uh, details about necessarily what he did more than details about what you did. With details about you going to the farm and him being there, mm -hmm. okay, and you all leaving 
hence you being there and you mm -hmm. leaving. We, we, you know? we would expect, we're just going back to this time, y'all arriving at the farm at 8, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's it's getting to be summertime, but you know, that doesn't leave you a whole lot of daylight for fishing or tooling around, and it could start about 9 o'clock. 9, 9.30. So, but you're there until 11, almost 11.30. Yeah, but I mean, with all this going on, you know, I mean, it's like I say, it's just a good way to go out there and get rid of stress. Well, well, what did you do to get rid of stress? I mean, what did he do to get rid of stress? That night? Yeah, she yes. <laughs> And he's like, what did you do to get rid of stress? I'm like, no, we just go out there to get rid of stress. And what did you do? And what did he do? Because they talk about fishing and listening to the crickets and all this, if you combine the stories. But what did you do that day when Brooks Hawk had his police interview? The two of you headed out there. A rare moment of two brothers going out there at the same time to Mama's farm, right? And they're both out there until 1130 at night. What are they doing? He's just like, no, we're going out there to relax. So, yes, but what did you do? Shoot some, shoot some clay pigeons or something? Or? No, I mean, I, like I told you before, I mean, I'll go out there, I'll ride the four-wheeler religiously. You know, I'll go to the lake and like the last hour before it gets dark, that's about the best time to go fishing. Sure. So, I mean, I mean, I understand y'all's perspective, but it, it, you, you got it wrong. I, mean, they, they don't, you, I know you're doing your job and I'm not, you know, I, I don't hold it against you. Do what you need to do. But. Was, was, is there any reason that her DNA is going to come back in your trunk? Oh, I'm 100% I'm certain it won't. You're deer dead in the water. No yeah. way. What about on that blanket? No way. Any hairs, fibers? No way. Like that? No way. How does he know, though? How can he be so confident? You know, that blanket that was at the barn where his brother also was, it would have been more honest if he said, well, I don't know, maybe Brooks used it for something before. How would I know? Because they're like, do you think Crystal's DNA would be on that blanket? And he's like, no way, no way, no way. That's, that's sus in itself. Never took anything out of your trunk is what you're saying. I did. So if we had somebody who had seen you do that, seen you take stuff out of your trunk and put it in your name. just making stuff up. The coincidence of you all both arriving there at the same time, not having any kind of conversation can't remember anything that you talked about, anything that you did at the farm, and then leaving at the exact same time. Dang, it was coincidence. I mean, I'm, I know it sounds fishy, but it's that's I mean, the way so, it is. But, but I mean, you can appreciate how. Oh, how, I, I can. I can. I mean, we're we're. I mean, this isn't our first rodeo, and and I'm sure this isn't your first time dealing with a criminal investigation. So yeah, you you kind of know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So I would even expect you to hold this to a higher standard and say, man, this is gonna. You know, it just doesn't sound right. You know, it, it doesn't match it, up. It's a weird case. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it is a very odd case. You know, and and we're, we're, we're like I said, we're, we're sitting here with, it, it still remains that we, we understand that, that you may not remember every single time you, you've been out to the farm or what you do. You know, you know, we all have habits. Like I said, you ride the four-wheeler religiously and, and fishing right, at, right before dark is the best time to go. Yeah, I understand that completely. But something, something's just not adding up here. You know, one plus one always equals two. And you look at the fact that you call him and, and you raise your voice to him, like you said, to, to tell him that he needs to be careful. You know, I'm big brother. I'm gonna kind of, you know, try to protect sure. him. At the same time, I mean, I'm not gonna cover something like this up for him. I'm just not that kind of guy. And furthermore, I mean, there's no way he had anything to do with this. What is this? Because you're calling it this. I'm not going to cover up for him with this. And there's no way he had anything to do with this. But what is this? Because at this point, it's just a missing persons report, right? And he'd apparently implied to his brother, what if Crystal ran away with someone? And then he later implies in this interview, you'll see, where it's like, maybe she was abducted. <laughs> so what is this? You know what I mean? Uh, Catherine, welcome to Grizzly Supporter. If something has happened to her, it wasn't because it wasn't because something he did. Well, again, I know you guys have got a job to do. I mean, do it, but I mean, you, you're wasting time. Well, well, who who else would be responsible for this? I mean, I don't have any names to give. If I did, I mean, well, what do you what do you think? What do you think happened? I mean, I, you know, I mean, she's a nice looking woman. I don't know if she got out there on the Bluegrass Parkway and somebody abducted her. I, you know, I don't know what happened, but I know Brooks didn't have anything to do with it. I just feel 100% certain. I mean, I. But he's 
How do you know? Because you never questioned him. You literally said you didn't ask him any questions. You didn't even know Crystal was missing. Don't you find that odd as a police officer when your brother's like, oh, a couple of days after the fact, he's like, oh, I think I learned it on Facebook or on TV. Not really from my brother. I mean, that's not weird, right? I mean, what is he? <laughs> it's It's what he says that's actually really a red flag of saying, well, no way. There's no way her DNA will be on that blanket. Weird. You don't know if Brooks ever used it. If you both go to the farm here as well. How do you know that he's 100% not involved? Well, now he's arrested and charged with uh, her murder eight years later. So just saying. Okay, let's continue on. I never denied it to you. No, I mean, no. I mean, I've never asked him. I just don't feel like... I feel like I know Brooks well enough that, you know, I know he would never do this. I'm not going to question him about it. So you've never even asked him the... you never said, hey, did you have anything to do with this? Tell me you didn't have anything to do with this. No, I've never asked him that. Never never said that? No. Well, I mean, well, you, 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 say, you say you ride the four-wheeler religiously. Mm -hmm. How often do you say you go out there? I mean, I'm out there two, three, four times a week. I mean... How come the cameras don't show you there a couple of weeks, you know, the two week period before last week? I'm not saying I go there every week, but I'm just saying and Religiously on means every week two to three times. Yeah, so. well, I'm just saying on average, I'm probably out there a good two, three, four times a week. But, but you weren't for the two weeks before this that last week? I, that doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, that doesn't yeah. make sense. I mean, I, I don't know what he's... It, it should be on the camera. You go back and look at the camera, do what you need to do, but I mean, well, what I, I, we had. I you mean, say th there, there was a three week period I've never been out there? The two weeks before. I don't the, believe that. Before this last uh, week. I don't believe that. Like since before the third. Uh, that's 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 not accurate. Okay. You can, but you can remember going out there then, but you can't remember. Well, I'm just I just feel like, I just feel like I'm 99% certain that uh, there wouldn't be a two or three week gap between uh, going out there. I don't necessarily remember going out there, but there's no way that I went three weeks without going to the farm. No, nope, no way. So you 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 say you went out to the farm on the eighth. You and your brother didn't have any contact that you remember. You just went and did your own thing, even though you got there at the same time and left the same time. Yeah, I mean I don't remember anything that he said or anything. We just kind of passed and rolled on. He had anybody with him? I uh, not that I not that I recall. Did anybody else? I like how they're just looking at him. So, you normally go out there religiously many times a week, whenever you go to the farm. Brooks says the same. But on this day, the very same day that Brooks was interviewed by police, you both head out there at the same time and you leave at exactly the same time and you live on the same street is what I'm still going to add there. But you have no idea what Brooks was doing there. You were just fishing, right? No idea. And again, can any of them remember, what do you eat? Like, do they eat ever? <laughs> what do you have for dinner? Did you talk around the table? Did you plan what to say, what not to say? What, what, did you make notes? <laughs> because it's just like, I have no idea. Didn't, I, we just pass each other. That's just weird. My word. See so you all both out there, other than the camera at the I don't house know. pool. Yeah. I don't think so. Because you told somebody, I think, at one point that you, you remember being out there that night and, and you and Brooks sitting there talking with your mom. I don't remember that. I mean... Okay. So, you're saying that the, the biological fluids they found in the car... Are you for certain there's biological fluids? Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that they, they biological cut, fluids... They, they wouldn't cut holes in your truck liner and take it for further testing if it was a biological fluid. When you, when, you, when you get that car back and see that car, it's going to have stuff cut out all over it. And that blanket lit up like Chernobyl. That when blanket ain't coming back. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there, there's no way. That, that none of her biological fluids or anything is going to be on that blanket or anything. I don't know where the stuff came from, if it is there, but it's not hers. So you never helped him move a body? I mean, whose is it? You know what I mean? The way that he's saying, oh, but it's not hers. Okay, whose is it? There's a couple of people we could name with unsolved murders in bars, so I'm just saying, like, yeah, it's not hers. That just sounded so weird how he said it. No, yeah, no, it's not hers. Definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, how do you know that? How do you know that? It's just... Wow. I did not. Never helped him move any evidence. Never. Because... I mean, here's what we think happened. We think that your brother is is a good guy, 
and we think that he's probably a, a pretty good father to that boy. Um, I mean, he's probably a pretty good boyfriend to, to Crystal, but we all have times where something just happens. All right, he probably he, he probably found out that some other police officer or some other person in the town was was cracking Crystal, um, and that when very he, easily could have you know, and, and that very easily could have happened, you know. Somebody maybe somebody maybe around here, I don't know, but uh, we think that, that that's what happened, and your brother found out about it, and confronted Crystal about it, and when he did, you know, he probably tried to maybe do something to her as far as. You know, making her understand that that wasn't going to fly with him, yeah, and, that didn't and, 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 and and then no after way. and then after that point, you know, maybe it went just a little bit too far, and when it went just a little bit too far, he couldn't turn back time. And when I'm just gonna, if I were now knowing what we know now, of course, it's been eight years. I would um, probably, if I were going to be a police officer right here, but they didn't know this yet, right? What exactly did Crystal tell him on the day before she went missing? It was about finding out about Brooks' shady business. I would speculate that. Not that she was having an affair, but rather that like, hey, what if she was finding out? And I suppose that's obviously their tactic, right? To, to say maybe she was seeing someone else and then he got really upset about it. Maybe, huh? But maybe she found out about all his shady business and he needed to eliminate her. Maybe they, maybe... Jason Ellis was also eliminated by a similar group, let's say, right? That's part of the speculation. We've already gone over that in episode one. I hope you'll check it out. Thank you so much for being here with me. If you are live now with me, if you're watching the replay, thanks as well. Let's continue on. We've got about an hour more of footage to watch, so it'll still take a while, okay? He couldn't turn back time. Who's he going to reach out to? But the one person that he trusts and knows that would help him out, and that would be you. And when he called you or he reached out to you, you know, you heard that your brother was in a tough spot and you being the good family man that you are, the, the good person that you are, you thought, well, I know this is wrong, but it's also right to take care of my brother and to keep him from going to prison for I the rest of his life. I can see you looking at things and that then, way, and then, then, that's no way at that point. At that I mean, point, I done told you that, you know, well, at, at that point, Nick, you, you know, you talk to him and, and he asks you to do something for him and you try to help him out with advice all that you can, but it finally comes to a point where advice isn't good enough anymore. He actually needed somebody to help him with something. And at that point, Nick, that's when you had to actually do something that you're ashamed of and that you're not proud of and you blocked it from your memory because you are ashamed of that. And because yeah. you're a good person, you actually have feelings. You block that out in your head. And when you block that out in your head, that's why you're having a problem remembering this stuff. But I know you know, and, and Detective Vaughn here knows that something like that happened, and that's exactly what we think happened in this situation. And Nick, this is the this, this is the this, time where this is the place. This okay. is your one chance. Now, now, Nick, if we find out that this stuff comes back in your trunk, or if we find a body, if a hunter finds that body, pretty soon, mm -hmm. assuming you know that they do, um, it, it's going to be a different game. It's going to be a different ball game at that point. Okay. Well, uh, this right now is the first inning. You know, once we find that out, that's closer to the ninth. We've got less time to make up ground and change what's on the scoreboard mm -hmm. because the scoreboard's going to be the same as it would be in the ninth inning, as it would be in the top or the bottom. It's not going to be what it was in the first. Mm -hmm. All right, we can change the score right now, but we can't later. We so, Nick, this is the only opportunity that we have to sit here and find out if you're the actual honest person that we think that you are. Well, I'm 100% honest. Uh, and, I, and I don't deny that, Nick, but, but you're not being honest with us about this, okay? But, now, whether it's not truly honest, well, then it's obvious you, you've got plenty of experience. I mean, you guys are squared away, but I can tell you, well, you well, there, Nick, there's Nick, no way it happened the way you said it. It's, it's, it sounds logical. It's very logical, Nick, yeah, because it's what happened. But, no, it didn't happen that way. It didn't. Okay. Then, how, how do you know it didn't happen you that know, way? Nick, you can't because remember what happened. Well, he's saying, bro, he's saying. <laughs> I love that. I love that. How do you know it didn't happen that way when you can't remember what happened? Uh, for those asking the date, I literally made the effort to put it right there throughout the entire interview. All the dates are listed when we have little clips and things so that you can see it, right? Especially like these interviews. I mean, July 15th, 2015, Nick Houck's interview with the Kentucky State Police. Crystal was last seen on July 3rd of 2015 and his brother Brooks was interviewed on July 8th. And then he's going to have a polygraph exam on July 24th, which we're also going to look at right after this, okay? Brooks did it, and I was in on it. I mean, it, there was no way. It, but it, were, were you there? Were you, were you going to say that, that Brooks didn't do it? No, but I know him well enough to know that Brooks Well, I know lots happen. of people, okay? I know troopers that I've worked with for my entire career. And guess what? They're not troopers anymore. 
And I thought I could say that. And I thought I could say that. Because you know what? We're all people. No matter what, what this says, mm-hmm. no matter what we go to church and say on Sunday, no matter what that we appear like, everybody is a person. And yeah. every person can change in a heartbeat. One would hope you wouldn't have to tell a police officer that, right? <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. When they're like, listen, people have dark sides, okay? You just don't know. You don't know. How they appear might not be how they are. Yeah, yeah. Nick should have learned that in police school. Well, they choose to or not. Sometimes things just happen. We make mistakes. But I, haven't, I haven't made any mistakes, and I have been 100% honest. Well, Nick, I, I don't disagree that, you know, you hadn't made any mistakes in your career, maybe. But, but in this... There's been some mistakes made. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Yeah. Because when I start thinking with this, this goes out the window. The logic goes out the window. Man, all I can tell you is, I mean, Brooks is a good guy. He didn't have anything to do with this. You know, I, obviously, you know, I'm hoping for the best and expecting the worst because I'm a police officer. Mm-hmm. I hope she walks in his front door any time, but at the same time, I mean, she's been gone for a while. She hadn't made contact with the kids. Well, you, you know, guys, it's, it's national media attention. We know that that she's not just out walking around in public somewhere mm-hmm. because somebody would have called us. Yeah. All right, it's been all over the news. Or she would have yeah. said, call, call here and said, hey, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't have any way to get money. She wouldn't have any way to call anybody, okay? Yeah. So the assumption of what you're talking about, assuming the worst, I think we can say that's logical to think right if now. If she had a flat tire, she would have used her cell phone and call somebody. Call somebody. Her, cell phone, it makes her, sense. her cell phone, it makes it, sense. Her cell phone's dead out there. There's nobody calling to ask for help. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't call. Now, Crystal's not the type of person, from what I know of her, and I've done a lot of background, she's not the type of person that's going to get out, get the spare tire out, get the jack out, change the tire, and nothing be out there on the scene. You know, but... Yeah, I don't, think she, I don't think she would change the tire either. Okay. She, she, called she, somebody. She, she would have called somebody, mm-hmm. okay? She would have called her, her boyfriend, she would have called her mom, her, her mm-hmm. mom, dad, she would have called the police, called 911, I don't know, maybe even would have called you, I don't know. But she would have called somebody. And you know, I think she okay. didn't do that. And you, she didn't do that. You know as well as we do, bluegrass is not very heavily traveled at that time of night. After after ten o'clock, you want to see a car every minute or two. Yeah, man, I can appreciate the job you guys are doing. I mean, I'm not, you know, but but I mean, I, 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 I wish we're not just doing a job though, Nick. We're trying to find out for that the the four kids. You got four yeah, kids, right? Four, 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 five, five, four, five, five. Okay. It's got a very similar tactic to Brooks. And when Brooks is like, I really appreciate you asking that question and I'd be happy to answer it for you. He's also like, you know what? I appreciate the job that you guys are doing. They're like, we're not just doing a job. We're literally trying to find Crystal. It's not like, this is not just like um, filming for a movie or something, right? It's real life, looking for Crystal. And this guy is also showing no concern, just like his brother. Brooks was not concerned about where the mother of his son was you know and where his girlfriend was no concern at all very cool calm collected right just what i appreciate the job you're doing and what are you doing but she's got five kids we're trying to find out from them because it's not fair for them to not know what happened to their mom I'm, I'm with you know, and that's why we're here we're not here we're not here to, to get anybody in trouble i mean that's part of our job we okay. gotta arrest people we gotta put them in jail but our main job or what i, what I come to work for is to, to solve these crimes, mm-hmm. to give people answers, all right? And I'm not gonna waste my time on something that's not worth it. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be here talking to you, Nick, if, if I thought this was a waste of time. And when you said it's a waste of time, you know, I, I don't think well, you I understand think the, that. I think the okay, time this is be, not This is not a waste of time. I Nick. think the okay. time would be better spent somewhere else. I mean, well, we're, that's all I'm, we're, we're at. I think, I, think, I think the time would I'm be better spent right here if we just all started telling the truth. You know, well, I, don't, started talking. I know I'm telling the truth. Well, Are you Nick, telling the truth? Nick, I'm telling the truth. Okay. But what I need you to do is I need you to remember those things that you say that you can't remember. Okay? Whether it's it's damning towards your brother, whether it's damning towards somebody else, I just, I, 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 there's a reason why those aren't coming forward. Okay? There, there is, is a reason. There is a reason. You know what it is? Well, if you can't remember it, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's it. I, that, that's not a very good reason. Well, you know that. You know that in your heart. You know that's it, not It may not reason. be a good reason, but it's the truth. Well, it's not a good reason. Okay. And, well, then, and we're, we're thinking of reason and logic in this room. You've already mentioned it twice. Yes, that's logical. Yes, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right, those are the kind of things that, that we use as investigators, right? Yeah. All right, then. And then, then you add... <laughs> Again, something a police officer should know. They, 
he should be taking notes now, you know, because they're telling him, look, man, you can't just judge people by their appearances. There might be something behind that mask. You've got to consider like police school 101. And now they're like, listen, here we, we use logic. OK. And he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, write that down. OK, write that down. Maya, I would love to know more information. So if there's locals in chat and you know about this case, the teen that he did not report missing, I'm sure then someone else would have reported the teen missing, right? I'm not, I don't know. Um, I've tried to dig, tried to find, I can't find anything on it. So if anyone has any more information on that, please let me know. Continuing on. In the addition, the, the, the dog hitting, indicating on, on your car. Let's take it to the lab. Biological fluids are found in the trunk of your car where there shouldn't be anything. They, there shouldn't be anything. There's not going to be. There not, shouldn't be. There, there's not going to be. Well, there is. I mean, there's, there's no dispute. There literally is. The cadaver dog first alerted to his trunk. Then they did tests and the blue star reagent or the luminal lit up like a smurf. <laughs> and then after that, they're, they're questioning me. He's like, I don't know, man. I don't know why. Cadaver dog? What? A cadaver dog and luminal? No way. Just no way. <laughs> okay. There is biological fluid in the trunk of your car. The dog wouldn't have hit on the quarter panel in the trunk if there wouldn't have been something in there. We wouldn't have sent it to the lab if the dog didn't hit on it. And the lab wouldn't have tested it and sprayed luminol and it came back looking like a smurf if there wasn't something there. There's, you know, if just the dog hit on it, maybe the dog had something up its nose that day, okay? But when, it, when you take it and you put it and you, and you spray it at the lab, you know, that's two different things that are verified yeah, there's something. And the that guy that had the car before you was a neat freak. I mean, yeah, it was okay. probably spotless when you got yeah. it, wasn't it? But, you know, I mean, the other thing, you, you got, you know, when speaking about logical, I mean, who would do this on a city-maintained cruiser? Who, well, you know, I mean, who would do that? What better, what, what better way to go undetected? I disagree, man. I, with, I just disagree with that. What better way to go undetected? Who's going to stop a police car? Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I'm the bluegrass. I'm no, the people no, one, no one's going to do who's that. Gonna stop a, who's going to stop a truck that's been followed by a police car? Yeah. Nobody. Who, who's going to think anything if they see a police car on the side of the road? I guess there's flip sides to everything, but who, who's going to think of anything if they see a police car on the side of the bluegrass parkway behind a car with a flat tire? You know, dropping, dropping a car off on the interstate. Nobody's going to think anything of it. They're going to say, well, I mean, you're right. I, I can't. That's such a good point, right? If there's a car with a flat tire, who's going to say anything about a a police car out there, a cruiser? Oh, my goodness. Okay. But somebody, a witness, uh, if you'd watched the Oxygen series right on this case, they said that a eyewitness, they actually played their voice. They just altered it. They said they saw a white car a mile up the road from where Crystal's car was found. And that night, it was actually on the Friday night when they saw it there at around 11.30 p.m., I think it was. And they said it looked like a Buick. And remember that the Hawks' grandmother had a white Buick. So they saw Crystal's car and a white car that looked like a Buick. When the police wanted to execute a search warrant on the Buick, the granny sold the car. As if that's not dodgy either. Okay, so continuing on. Now that, you know, but uh, you're wrong. I mean, well, you, you, you tell me that you're telling the truth. And, and and that's what you're you're maintaining, right? Most definitely. And you're telling me you want to be cooperative. That's why you're here, right? Yes. Okay. What about taking a polygraph exam? You took one to become a police officer. I took one to become a police officer. Didn't you take one? Yeah. I okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we know that that your brother went up there and took a polygraph. Okay. He didn't fail the polygraph. All right. We didn't we didn't say he failed the polygraph. Mm -hmm. They said that the polygraph was inconclusive, which means it's neither pass nor fail, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if they can't get 100% accurate reading, they're not going to make a judgment on it, right? Because they're being fair, all right? Inconclusive doesn't mean anything. It just means inconclusive. It's like clocking two cars. If you can't tell which one was the one you're, you're getting ready to write a ticket for for speeding, you're not going to write it. Yeah, you don't, you don't pull them yeah, out. Unless you're 100% sure. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't mind, I don't mind to take the polygraph. I mean, I really don't. Uh, so, you, so you, you take polygraph and say that... He says... He won't mind taking the polygraph. He really won't, but he does. He minds a lot. You're going to see it afterwards. He minds a lot because it comes back inconclusive. He's like, I'll take it. Didn't seem so keen on the Celebrite, which is, you know, what they used to extract all the information from his cell phone. He's like, eh. didn't even really answer them. That was about half an hour ago, right? But here he's like, I don't mind taking that polygraph. Oh, you do. And we're going to watch that together. Okay, so hang in there for that. If you've just joined, we're watching this July 15, 2015 interview with Nick Houck, Brooke. 
Hawks' brother. Brooke Hawks has been charged with the murder of Crystal Rogers and tampering with evidence. Another guy called uh, Joseph Lawson was also arrested, charged with conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence. People speculate, could there be a third arrest and could it be Nick Hawk? Especially because Nick Hawk sold a gun to an undercover agent using a fictitious name. And now the prosecution is saying that gun has met four out of five criteria to be a match to the same gun that killed Tommy Ballard, Crystal's dad. So will he be facing charges? I wonder. I won't be shocked. Okay, so we're going to finish this interview. Then I'm going to show you a few little clips in between from when he got fired, and then I'm going to show you the polygraph uh, debrief. Exact same thing, if I asked you on the polygraph, if they said, Nick, did you have any involvement with the disappearance? I would say no, it's because I didn't. Okay, and if they said, Nick, did you have any knowledge of her disappearance, what would you say? No. Okay, now, if they ask you, did you load that body up into the trunk of your Barstown City no. Cruiser? No. Okay, so. Pretty easy test, wouldn't it be? Sounds like it. Okay. You'd be willing to do that? How'd you do on it? How would you do on it? I think I'll pass it with flying colors. I've got nothing to hide. How about anybody else? I mean... So you think that you would pass with flying colors, but when they asked about his brother's inconclusive polygraph test, he said, well, I think they were going to blame him no matter what. They were going to say he failed the test no matter what, or it was inconclusive no matter what. But him, he says he's going to pass with flying colors, but no, <laughs> he doesn't. Spoiler alert, he doesn't pass with flying colors. Did, did Crystal, do you think Crystal would have known something that she shouldn't have known, and that's probably why she went missing? If you don't believe the story about him getting, you know, maybe a little physical with her maybe one time, do you think she could have known something? What's back that, man? Back, back up a little bit. I'm not following. Okay. Well, you, you said you don't believe the story that he maybe got a little physical with her. No, I don't think Brooks is ever right. physical. Okay. Now, what about uh, Brooks? He's got a lot to lose. I mean, he's got a pretty, pretty nice life. It seems like. I mean, he's doing pretty well for himself. What if, what if she had some information that would turn his life upside down? Yeah, I mean, he would still. No matter what she had, he wouldn't have done anything like this. Okay. Now, what if she had? Him that's a crazy sentence. No matter what she knew or found out, if she found out some stuff about your brother, he says, no matter what she knew, he wouldn't do anything like this. Again, I ask, what is this? I wish they asked him, what is this? What do you mean by this? Because you keep saying this. So what do you think it is? What is this? Wow. Information on somebody like you. Or somebody else. What, what would you say about that? I don't know where you're going. Information. What kind of what, I mean, what if she knew something about you that you didn't want anybody else in the world to know? Uh, or or anybody. Not not just you. I mean, and, and, what, him, and if she did, what what he asked? Do, do you think that might have been what happened? I mean, is that more logical than him getting a physical altercation with her? What's more logical? I mean, did she pop off and say, you know? Well, I, I know you're dirty, you're doing this and this to these tenants, or you're doing X, Y, and Z to this, and he just, you know, and just, you know. He ever said anything like that to you? No. Yeah. He never mentioned anything about her making stuff up about it? No. Telling her friends anything? So, so obviously we've gone down that. It's not a logical explanation in your mind. I don't think so. Right. And... and what, like like him, I agree. I think what happened is it was something heat of the moment. We all get in the heat of the moment, and 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 just be honest, shit happens. Mm -hmm. you know, shit happens that we can't take back that we wish we could. Yeah, I mean, I, I just you know, I, I know nothing like that happened, and I mean, you guys are kind of going over the same stuff. I mean, I what well, I mean, it did, it, it, I'm gonna tell you, if I could help you in any way with the investigation, I would. I mean, I'm just that kind of guy. That you but you didn't help. You didn't even know she was missing. <laughs> you didn't talk to your brother about it, even afterwards, even apparently after his police interview. No conversation about that was had, but he's the nicest guy. He will help out with the investigation, okay? And still, he's like, nope, that didn't happen. How do you know it didn't happen? How do you know that they didn't argue about what she found out about his shady businesses? Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> She's got kids. There's no way that I could uh, I could deal with something like that and just cover it up. Well, what about Brooks? You know, what about him? What about him? Is he that type of person, or is he? I think person that could. 
I mean, everybody's different. You know, oh, well, he, he, there's no way he could do something like that. He's not capable of it. Would he be capable of asking somebody else to do something like that? Brooks didn't hire that out. I mean, it's just, it's, there's just no way he had anything to do with it. So, but eight years later, Joseph Lawson was charged with conspiracy to commit murder, which means he conspired with the other person who was arrested, Brooks Hauck, right? So would he get someone else to help him out with it? Well, well, well. <laughs> now we've just established that this is a lie because it seems like he would, right? What about uh, he rents a lot of property? I'm sure he rents to some shady people. Oh, I bet he does. They ever found any indoor grows or anything in any of his properties? No, not that I'm aware of. Again, you know they do that around here a lot. You know, oh, all yeah, real properties. Meth lab, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, I mean, Nelson County's full of dope. I mean, yeah. uh, any chance that he'd be involved in something like that? No way. He just doesn't fool with any kind of drugs. He doesn't drink. No well, way. I mean, there's certain people that are involved in that kind of stuff that aren't you know, aren't involved in yeah, themselves, yeah. you know what I mean? They're in it for the money. Exactly. Some people deal it and don't take it, is what they're trying to say. Yeah, but he's not. I mean, he makes money in mining. What, what, do you, what do you think should happen to somebody, say, say they, they killed somebody in the heat of the moment? Just kind of a, it was, they didn't, they didn't really mean to. I think they're just as guilty as somebody that killed them anyway. Yeah, I don't have any patience for that kind of crap. I mean, she's got kids and stuff, and I mean, Anybody that could uh, have anything to do with their disappearance or possibly kill somebody, man, they need to be dealt with. What, what about somebody that, that comes in after the fact that, that didn't have anything to do with, with the killing or the disappearance? And I think they're just as guilty. Do you think any of them should be given a second chance? No. I don't believe in second chances. I mean, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm a pretty conservative guy. You don't want a lot of issues. and mm -hmm. I mean, man, anybody could do anything like that just... We don't need them here on Earth. I could have sworn Brooks said the same thing. He doesn't believe in second chances. I heard that somewhere. I read it or heard him say it. I can't remember if he said it yesterday. Somewhere along the line, I'm sure Brooks said this well. Because I, I thought that's a red flag. Like, doesn't believe in second chances. So, yeah. If you cross one of these brothers, then what? What happens? So, if, if Brooks did do this, you feel the same way? Most definitely. If Brooks did it, he'd be dead to you. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have another thing to do with him. I mean, anybody that's that despicable and can just disregard the kids, and I mean, that's that's a that's a pretty nasty person. Even, about about even, as bad as it gets. even if there was a reason, if that person thought they had a reason, I can't think of one reason in my head to justify something like that. If somebody. You know, we obviously have to, to go through our lives thinking different than other people. Uh, as police officers, you know, we know we might kill somebody every day we come to work. It's a possibility. But that's only if somebody's going to try to kill us first. Exactly. Now, that's but obviously self-defense. That, that, that's, that, that, that's a difference. Okay? Yes. But uh, having that same mentality, you know, did Crystal and him have ever had any problems maybe where she could have done something to him where he had to defend himself and then I don't really know and I don't really know of any instance like that or the incident y'all brought up about her seeing some other dude I mean I I really well, I, I can say fairly sure certainly that she was seeing other people you know she may have I mean I didn't really know her that well I can't I can't tell you you're wrong you know and your brother you know has he uh, has he ever been known to run around on girls I don't think he's ever ran around on her I can't say that he's never cheated on a girlfriend but mm -hmm. I mean, well, your I, brothers, you've probably seen some things or heard some things in the past, but you know, as far as Crystal, he wasn't running around on her? No. Well, why weren't they married? Why didn't they get married? You ever talk about marrying her? Well, I mean, that... How does he know? He said he hardly sees his brother. He thinks he saw Crystal last year. So how does he know his brother wasn't running around? You know what I mean? How do you know? He's certain about such strange things. As far as I knew, she was married to, uh, was it Keith Rogers or whoever it was? I mean, and, and I think they, you know, at one time they were talking about, uh, you know, trying to get her divorced from him, but as far as he, either one of them running around, I, I don't believe that was the case. That's what I, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I wasn't around her a lot, and I can't tell you that you're wrong. Well, when could you take the polygraph exam? Uh, I'll be off the next few days, so I mean, 
So I mean, that's if, that's if, we, if we got one set up for tomorrow, or got one, well, it's kind of late now to set yeah. one up tomorrow, but uh, maybe if we got one set up for the next couple of days, would that be something that well, you could why, do? why don't we just shoot for Monday? Okay. Well, what if they're, you well, know, what, what is today? Today is Wednesday, so we got Thursday and Friday still before they close down for the weekend. Okay. Well, it, all it all depends on their availability. Yeah, I mean, they might, they might have, they might I mean, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I just moved and everything. And it ended up happening nine days later, on the 24th. So they're like, actually, today's Wednesday. You could go on Thursday or Friday. He's like, how about Monday? <laughs> He's got to head out back to that farm, you know, just discuss some things with his mom. I'm just filling in the blanks there, okay? I'm speculating. Let's just try to shoot for Monday. And if that'll make you guys happy, then, then I'll be more than glad to do it. Well, I don't have a problem with it. The thing about it is, you know, we go up there and take the test. Uh, you, you're telling us that you're you're being honest, yes, right? Hundred percent. Right? You're you're hundred percent on that. Mm -hmm. Now you know that I've sat here and talked to people in that same seat that you're in right mm -hmm. now that have told me they're being hundred percent honest, and later on I find out they're not. Yeah. Okay. Is that a fair assessment? Most definitely. Okay. So you sitting in the chair that I'm sitting in right here, and somebody sitting there in your chair telling you that same thing. I'm skeptical. Poly you are. The, the, I'm probably more skeptical. The, the polygraph is something that can that can help us. It's a tool. We don't use it in court, but mm -hmm. it's a tool. Yeah. All right. Just if, like if that it makes you feel, you know, whatever it does it for you, it'll be fine. But but agreeing to do that now, you're not going to change your mind later. No. You're, 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 you're going to be a man of your word, and you're going to take polygraph. You got it. If we said yes. It yes, sir. Hang tight. Yep. Yeah. All right. Do you want anything to drink? No, just, just be wrapping it up, though, because I'm, I'm fixing to get out. Okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, actually, i got to go. <laughs> actually, just hurry. The, well, let's just wrap this up, okay? Because I've got stuff to do. All right, I'm going straight to the farm. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> oh, big yawn. I had to get the keys back from my car so we can get out of here. And my behind was about to sleep. <laughs> Can you think of anything else I need to ask you or anything else yeah, that's important? I, I mean, I, I think you did a good job, you know. I mean, I can commend you for that. I, you seem like a pretty squared way. Oh, now you're going to review <laughs> the interview. He's like, I think you did a good, pretty good job, okay? Very good job, guys. Excellent. <laughs> well done. Is he patting himself on the back or what? Is this him trying to build rapport? <laughs> Look at this. This officer now is like, oh, man. He's trying to inflate my ego. That would be his manipulation right now. Being so charming. Red flag. <laughs> well, you know, I just want to make sure that we cover everything because obviously there might be a second opportunity for us to sit down and talk. Uh, I mean, if you remember something that's different between now and then. Uh, yeah, I mean, you also set up that polygraph exam and I mean, I'm sure we can talk for a minute or two before or after that if we need to. If, something's if you've got a card, I'll be more than happy to call you. I mean, I. All right, so you ready to roll? Yeah. This is a case really where... Okay, so this is a little clip from October 2016 where the former police chief, he was the police chief at the time, right? McCubbin talks about Nick Hauk being fired. So I'm just putting this in here. This is now not chronological because we're going to see the polygraph exam that actually happened nine days after that interview. I'm just putting this here for you just, you know, to keep, to keep you focused. Okay, let's look at this. Um, as they say why he got fired. Then we're going to look at the polygraph uh, debrief, okay? It's as much for what a police officer didn't do as much as what he did do, if that makes sense. Um, I looked at it from my perspective that we don't get to pick and choose a lot in law enforcement. <clears throat> that there are things that we, we will do, we shall do, not that we may do. And I was... Um, less than impressed, uh, was very bothered by some of, of the actions that uh, were displayed and um, though they were addressed the best we could make them, I, uh, as chief I just didn't, uh, he just, he had, he was done in my opinion, what I asked him to do. Um, I guess, as, you know, I expect a lot out of law enforcement, I expect a lot out of the officers that are under me. And um, that was not a, a behavior that I was going to accept as chief. And I asked the mayor to 
please consider my request that is as long as I was chief I wouldn't have any police officer work under me um, in, in that form. On my test, that first okay well I just want to quickly go back a minute or two as he walks out let's just see if there's a phone in his pocket or anything like that what do you guys think I mean it might be his firearm right what's in his pocket see more oh, I don't know. I just had to go back and see it. Okay, now here we are. Hold on. And a, a behavior that I was going to accept as chief. And I asked the mayor to please consider my request. That is, as long as I was chief, I wouldn't have any police officer work under me. Love um, that. In, in that form. Great chief, right? So glad that he was the chief and that he's got such high standards. And he's like, no, man, this guy's not going to work for me. Not while I'm chief. Hell no, he's not going to be here. I mean, otherwise it would have uh, continued, right? So that was interesting. Okay, now this is from July 24th. So nine days after Nick Houck was interviewed, not the next day. I remember that it was Wednesday and they said, well, we've got Thursday, Friday. He's like, how about Monday? Clearly Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So much later, right? A week, more than a week later. There he was. He had his polygraph uh, test. He didn't do well on it. It was inconsistent, especially when they asked him questions about Crystal. So this is the the debrief of it, the, the interview after the polygraph test, okay? My test, that first test, you uh, did not pass the test. And it's pretty clear to me that you haven't told me the complete truth today. And the questions you're having a problem with are questions about Crystal. And in particular, the one about whether or not you know where she is right now. And uh, I don't—I treat police officers in these circumstances like I would myself. So we're not going to go through all the interview interrogation nonsense. Uh, uh, you and I are on the same page. Uh, but again, I'm also going to tell you the complete truth as we're sitting here. And it's no longer a matter of wondering, do you know anything about what happened? We're past that now. I mean, I, I'm crystal clear with you. I give everybody a good, fair test. I'm no longer asking you if you know. You do. Um, now, what you want to do with that is entirely up to you. I'm going to yell and scream at you and get the sick woods phone book and all that. I'm talking to you man to man as a fellow law enforcement officer. Uh, that the time has come for you to think real hard about the rest of your life. Okay. This is you. I'm not talking about Brooks or anybody else. Uh, and I'm, I'm telling you facts of life. I'm an old guy. I'm not trying to be a father figure here, but I'll tell you in doing this for 25 years the way that this pans out. When the FBI gets involved in this investigation, I want you to listen to one thing. You don't have to say anything to me. You do whatever you want to do. As I said, we, you may never even be an FBI agent, right? But once you get on the radar, we don't go away. Unless there's a reason to. I thought there would be. You didn't pass this and there's some other information there as well. So I guarantee you we're not going the FBI has unlimited resources in terms of forensic information, electronic information, many bodies as we want to pour out here to do surveillance and look through everything that's ever gone on. We will find Crystal. I have zero doubt about that. It's a matter of when it's going to be and why. And inevitably, what's going to happen is one of a couple of things. We'll determine exactly if she's injured and dead, which she in likelihood is, you've come to that conclusion yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that happened and the means in which it happened. Now, I know what your relationship is with your brother. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a tight relationship, but in a unique kind of way. You have a little different relationship, and, and it's actually, again, not trying to make compared, similar to what mine and my brothers are. They're close, but in a very different way. And. No doubt in my mind that you've spoken with him uh, about what happened. You know essentially what happened. And whether or not it was something staged out and planned in terms of I'm going to make her go away, or if it was something that was, I hesitate to say an accident, but something that was not intended to do. My hunch is, I don't know, because I don't have the physical evidence in front of me to know, but 99% of the time in these it's something that uh, was not intended, a push, a shove, somebody trips, hits her, or whatever. Have no idea. We find her, we're going to know, no doubt about it. And we will. And at that point, 
they're no longer going to come and ask you what happened. Mm -hmm. They're no longer going to come and ask Brooks what happened. <laughs> Don't you just love it? The heat is on now. <laughs> just Joe says, did you see him gulp? <laughs> yep. Yes, indeed. They're going to know what happened. And they're going to prosecute, assuming a worst case scenario. Because everybody had an opportunity up front to say, whoa, time out. It's a horrible, horrible thing. I got scared. Let me just tell you what happened. Uh, Libby, Libby says, I still don't understand why it took eight years, though. Because they've never found her body. They still haven't found her remains. So it's a no-body case, you know what I mean? And that's very difficult. Then you really got to make sure you have the burden of proof that you can go in there and really make your case uh, to convince a jury, right? Before you can make any arrest. So they obviously found something recently uh, that ties everything together to do that without finding Crystal's remains. Nobody's going to want to hear that anymore. Because all your testimony in the grand jury, all of his in the grand jury, the interviews that were recorded, where there are demonstrable lies about things that were said, that's all I'm put in front of a jury and or a judge, you know, even in the system. And people are going to look at it in the totality and say, well, now they're saying it was some kind of an accident or they didn't intend for it to happen. Why didn't they just say that last month, last year, five years ago, whenever it may be? And what's going to end up happening is people end up getting prosecuted and they look for the most significant sentences they can for people. And then people start cutting deals and who's going to get uh, the reduced sentence and blah, you know how that all works. Point is, at that point, it's out of everybody's control. We, if we're going to get involved as the FBI and expend all these resources, then we're going to just assume the worst uh, and go forward. If at this stage, however, and I'm just giving you the facts to, to lay out. These are not things uh, I, I have no doubt you've pondered this since the very first day this all occurred. Mm -hmm. But I want you to refresh it in your mind. And you think about it however you want to. What everybody that I've talked to believes is this was something that was not a planned out murder for hire type thing or that nature. It was about a relationship and something that happened flared up, like you were how many domestics in your career plenty, and you know people don't plan those out. Sometimes you know, you see a pattern of behavior. It doesn't appear to be the case here. That's why I asked you about their relationship, and others have as well. Nobody's pointing to saying it's that kind of relationship. Again, I'm not going to lay out all the evidence that's sitting there right now, and there's plenty of it. And I don't know the additional evidence that's going to come out as this goes forward, because we're just getting started on an awful lot of things. But rest assured, it's all going to be laying on a table where you can now point and say, okay, this is it. And uh, whether it be a circumstantial type of a case where it's just you put together the totality and it's so overwhelming that there is only one conclusion that a jury can draw, that's probably how this is going to work out. Unless somebody wants to step up and be a man and say, what? <laughs> step up and be a white-blooded man like your brother said he is, right? Remember yesterday we looked at that, you guys? Uh, Jean said, on top of all of this, nobody to return to the family. That's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yes, indeed. And somebody asked, uh, Code Grey here said, did they look for a grave on the farm? They looked on those farms, on all the Hauk properties, so many times. I'd love to get an actual number of exactly how many search warrants uh, were executed over the years at those properties, but many, many, many. Okay, so, yes. They really, they searched everything all this time, and finally... They found something, some item of interest, apparently under like a driveway at a subdivision that belongs to Brooks Howe, something like that. We're not sure what the item is or what they found to help lead to his arrest and Joseph Lawson's arrest. And also Joseph Lawson was arrested first. So we also don't know if he, <laughs> you know, snitched. <laughs> if he said, OK, OK, now for a lesser sentence, let me tell you <laughs> what you can find and where. We just don't know. Right. Um, they're keeping that very close to the vest, of course, to protect this investigation after so long. They've got to make sure do it right. Nancy Jennings, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate it. You said, Grizzly, as much as I love you, this one is for the Mars, keeping it real. Please remember, I'm not a bookkeeper, so I cannot calculate all these types of things. There's no way for me to do this and split it between all the mods. So you got to go to the mod coffee tip jar, okay? Thank you so much, uh, Nancy. Um, Go to the mod coffee tip jar if you want to spoil the mods because they work very hard and you guys can do that. We've made that their own coffee page and it's on grizzlytruecrime.com. Click on support, 
scroll down, you can see what are moderators and all of that and how to support them, okay? It's also when we share the coffee link. There's my coffee, buy me a coffee, or you can buy the mods a coffee and it gets split between them every quarter, okay? So go spoil them there. Thank you so much. CK said it's getting, <laughs> it's getting real quiet in that room. Yeah, he's just observing now. Mm -hmm. But he gets loud later. For about 20 minutes now, he's going to listen and be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, thinking, calculating, right? But then, later, he gets very defensive. He starts raising his voice quite a bit. So hang in here with us, and we'll be watching that together. We have about 40 minutes left of footage to watch, okay, with commentary in between. So we're still here for a while. Hope you're enjoying the time with me, even though the topic is very grim, very sad. Electronic Village, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Here's the deal. This is what happened and make it better. Uh, I tell you, 25 years of doing this, it always works out for the best. But that's what happens. People aren't going to come in. You know the deal. Once you, you've interviewed a lot of people in your career. I'm a few quite of sure. More than a few, I would bet. You've been a lot for 11. An interview can be as simple as talking to people or traffic stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. You know people is my point. And in talking to those people, you pretty much know what happens. You've been around kids before. You know, if you ask them a question and they say something, you know, you know it pretty much right away. Well, that's what I do kind of on steroids. And I mean, it's obvious. Looking at your interviews before, it was already obvious that you're not being truthful about some things. Okay? To me, it was equally obvious that you're not somebody that had uh, a major role in anything that happened as far as her disappearance in me. And there could be some other issues and factors there. I don't know. But that's my assessment. But when we talk about, start talking about her, where she is right now, um, you know, when somebody fails a polygraph, the reason I did the test like this, you saw in the numbers test, right? When I had you write the number five and I had you tell me that you didn't write it, and it jumps off the screen that you're telling me the truth. Mm -hmm. There's areas right off of that list, you did the exact same thing. And you know where they are. And what that is is a guilty knowledge test, that's what we call it. And what that is, is your heart and your mind betraying what your body knows to be the truth. My master's degree is in forensic psychophysiology, which means the mind and the body interacting to determine truth in an interview setting. That's what I do. This is actually admissible in court because it's scientifically valid. So when I say you know more than what you told me, I'm not guessing that. Okay. And when I tell you, Polygraph, you didn't do well. I don't show people that show. I don't show it. You probably don't care, but just so you know the facts. It's results on your test. Deception indicated 100%, and then greater than 99. What's greater than 99? 100, right? What are the questions? Do you know where Crystal is right now? Are you hiding any information about what happened to Crystal? Okay. You didn't tell me the truth on both of those questions. So, I mean, I'm telling the truth. I'm not going to sit here and make up a bunch of stuff and try to read techniques with you. We're past that. So the cat's out of the bag as far as your guilty knowledge of what happened here. And, again, I'm not going to play the games with you. It's the detective doing all the read stuff and everything else. I'm telling you, it's two individuals who know the way investigations work, what the facts are. And the time is now, today, to start fixing this problem. You know, we can talk all about Crystal and how we need to get her a proper burial and her family needs closure and her son needs closure and all those things are true. But you know that. But you're a realist. You deal with them the today and the going forward. You even kind of said that basically in an in interview the other day. People were concerned about why aren't you, why isn't Brooks acting differently with what's happened here? You know, his girlfriend and mother's child is missing and he's happy-go-lucky, essentially. Well, people react to things in different ways, and I get that. That's why I say your relationship with him is a little different than others. It's a close relationship, but it's different than others might perceive. I'm the same way. That's an introvert's way of dealing with things. Introvert doesn't mean shy. It means you deal with things from an internal locus. We all do. I'm very much that way, so I, I get that. But that's why I'm not going to go into all these things about getting her a proper burial in the family, get her back uh, so that her son can visit the grave and all that. We all know that to be true, and you've already thought about that. You're dealing with that internally. What you're dealing with going forward is you, and, and more importantly, your brother. Um, your role in this, I'm assuming, because I wasn't out there to see exactly what you did or didn't do. 
My word, he's quiet. Okay, now he's gonna start speaking a little bit, but my goodness, he's very quiet, huh? Nothing. Well, I'm not even asking you. I okay. Not okay, we'll go ahead. I mean, I mean, you did. I've already shown you, so I'm okay, not asking you if you did it. Okay, okay. okay. And we both know that. Uh, it's, it's for a lie, I'm not trying to be punny, but it's crystal clear, right? What happened here. Now, the details of who did what when, can I tell you? Don't you guys love how I keep saying it's crystal clear? It's crystal clear what happened here. You know what I mean? Just telling him there. <laughs> you know? I don't know if that's on purpose that he's saying that, of course, this is about crystal disappearance. But he's like, yes, yes, it's crystal clear what happened here. Yes, here is deception. <laughs> he's just like, he's going to argue so much. Exactly, no, but I can, I can demonstrably point out through forensic evidence already that things that you told us uh, about where you were at various times are demonstrably not true. We can prove in front of a jury today that you were places that you said you weren't. That's just one oh, of Oh, boy. Um, again, I'm not asking for, I'm telling you the facts of what happened. Okay. You believe whatever you want about what I'm telling you. But I get paid to be truthful with people. All right, I'm here, my whole point today, when I'm doing a polygraph examination, I'm working for you, working for the person in that chair. This is about a quest for the truth. And we're much closer today to the truth than we were when you first walked in that door. You can deny, 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 and that's fine. That's what people do as well. That's what you've, you've done at this point. And it's human nature. You know, when, when people are asked questions about a matter such as this, they immediately circle the wagons and start to, well, out of self-preservation, we all... Man, let me just cut you off. I mean, it, do we need to take this any further? I would like to take it to the truth. That's the whole reason is we're the here. Is the test, though? I mean, man, this, I mean, I, you're talking crazy. Well, I mean, you're talking crazy. Is that you your rehearsed response to what was going to happen today? Because it sure sounds like it. I, I don't know what it sounds like. I'm just telling well, you. I'm telling you what you, you're, talking, you're talking crazy. What's crazy about it? Explain to me. The accusations you're making. Yeah, I'm saying you were know involved in this. Absolutely not. Well, you already told me that. That's why we did the polygraph, to find out. Well, now we both know. I told you what now? You told me before you had nothing to do with it, right? Yes. Well, now we're past that because I've already shown that you did have something to do with it. I don't know what the test. I just showed you. Okay, I'm I just showed it to you. I, but I'm telling you, I did have. And I'm I telling you, you're lying. I mean, I can't make it any. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but okay, I'm not telling you the truth. That, that's what I'm doing to you. I'm telling you the truth. No, you're not. We're past that. I've okay. already shown you. I've taken the polygraph. Hey, do you have anything else for me? Because I mean, I'm not going to sit here and we're not going to go back and forth like this. You do whatever you want to do. I, I tell them. I mean, I'm gonna I'm, I want to cooperate with you. I mean, I'm not well, here. Tell me what happened. Tell me what you know. I don't know anything. We're well, past that. You've already shown me that you do. I know nothing. I'm sorry. You. That's, well, that's not true. It's not me. I just showed you. I don't even show people their results. I showed you yours. Man. And I even went the extra step for you to find out, okay, well, let's try to nail down what you know more about. You know more about this? Who, who would know? Am I saying that you, you did it or you? He's getting extremely defensive now. Oh, yes, he does. He's like, I don't care what your computer says. He's going to say that later. Who cares what your computer says or the science? Because I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I'm just saying, you know more than we do. Whether that's a simple conversation with your brother or whether you were physically involved out there, I can't tell you. Either one of those things would explain what I'm seeing. My hunch is it's something that your brother told you. I don't know anything. He has not spoken with me about this. Well, He's my brother. I'm glad you said that because uh, he probably would know better than to say specific things. So it's a matter then perhaps of what you observed, what you saw, what you saw other people say. I don't know. I wasn't there. All I'm telling you is objectively, that's what we do. You, you and I do. That badge on there is, is what? It's to protect society. That's what a shield is, yes. right? Yes. That's what we do. And I'm protecting you just as I would anybody else. But at the end of the day, I'm protecting one thing, and that's the truth. And objectively, looking at the facts, even if I were to take this out of the equation, why would, would somebody, on numerous occasions, in a formal interview, under oath over there, say something they know isn't true? Why would they do that? Well, you know, may, uh, you're talking about you? Well, I mean, do you think it would have anything to do with being a little irritated about how things are going? I mean, well, that's why you would lie. Oh, okay. You, you you got a little irritated with how things are going, and so that is why you lied? <laughs> it's like, why would you say things over and over that aren't true? Well, don't you think it's maybe because I'm getting a little irritated with how things are going? Yeah, not a cop answer. <laughs> not an honest answer right there. Oh, my goodness. 
I didn't. I didn't lie. Well, to I'm you. telling you, you did. I mean, I can show that already. This is not even. Tell problem. me about. Tell me about one of the lies. Well, I, I can do that unless you're going to help me to understand the reasons behind it. Dude, I'm I not going to lay out all the evidence that they do or don't have, but I can. No, tell I, you. I didn't ask you. I said, tell me about something I've lied about. That's what we're talking about. In the grand jury, you said places that you were not. When today, when I asked you specifically a moment ago about whether or not you were ever at certain places, and you told me no. Well, I already knew when I asked that question that that wasn't true because I can place you there. Those are just examples. You, are you talking about the video out there in the driveway? No, I'm not. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. I know you don't. But I can promise you that I have been 100% honest with you. No, that's that's what everybody, 100% honest. That's just a you take what you take and stuff. That's what everybody says. I'm 100%, I'm 110% honest. That's not it. Look, there's either the truth or not the truth, right? And that's what I gave you, the truth. Well, but you didn't, and I've already shown that. I gave benefit of that before you come in. I'm assuming you're telling me the truth. Look, I treat people the way they treat me. You haven't been... Uh, an ass with me, and I'm not going to be an ass with you. I'm not that kind of guy. But I'm, I'm laying out for you what I've seen here. You, I can't argue with this. I've done over 2,000 of these. Trust me, when I told you I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. You must have slipped up today. No. I mean, I don't... What do you think the chances are better that you slipped up and the truth sunk out here or that I slipped up? I know you slipped up, but if you're telling me that I failed that test... I have told you, no, in certain terms, you did fail that test. Well, then the test, then it wasn't valid. I mean... Absolutely valid. <laughs> He's like, I'm telling you under no uncertain terms that you failed the test. He's like, well, well, then it's not accurate. It's not, it's not valid. <laughs> oh, okay. So if neighbors saw you putting things in your trunk, you know, <laughs> working with your brother, nope, that didn't happen. If a polygraph test is like, yeah, you lied. He's like, nope, not valid. <laughs> Just denial. Just let's gaslight the polygraph test. Okay. Didn't happen. Well, I, listen, I'm telling you, I had nothing to do with it. Okay, well, th that's fine. And I'll tell you, I'll even give you that you had nothing to do with it. Okay? I know for, for certain. For purposes here today. I know for certain I had nothing to well, do with it, and I know nothing about it. Well, that I won't. I won't give Well, I mean, that's Because just, I'm, I've shown that. Look, one of the two things is true. Again, what is it? He had nothing to do with it. What is it? Because really, it should be a missing persons case. But he always talks about this I, I i wouldn't cover for this he wouldn't be responsible for this now he's saying i don't do it i'm not responsible for it i'm not involved in it what what are you talking about oh man either you know something and it could be something relatively insignificant that you haven't told me i don't know anything absolutely nothing well then why would you be less than candid with me with the other interview and in the grand jury there's a reason for that but, uh, that's what I'm saying. Explain that to me. I had nothing to do with this, and I don't know anything about it. No, no, no. You know, just irritation. I mean, that just kind of worked its way into this. Okay. You know, I've been 100% honest. Okay, well, that, that gets to, maybe that's it. Let me ask you that. All right, uh, I'll give you that. I was doing his face. He's like, I've been 100% honest. Like, oh, that's the face of honesty right there. <laughs> just like smirk. Okay. When I ask you if you'd be less than can, that means less than 100% truthful about things. You said you were irritated. Okay. Which I, I understand. I would be too. Uh, true. Uh, no doubt about it. Okay. Okay. Um, have I been accused of things in the past that I didn't do? Yeah. Um, have I been accused of things I did do? Absolutely. Okay. And I've been irritated when I got accused of things I did do because I got caught. And then I got to face up with the consequences. You talk about being irritated in there. Tell me some of the things then. Like, it, again, I'm not, free pass. I'm, not, I'm not rehashing all this. I'm just. No, 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 no. I don't, no, want, no, waste, no. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. I'm my time is not wasted listen, if we're here talking. Listen, I don't know nothing about this. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. And I had nothing to do with it. I don't know anything. Well, if I had something to tell you, I would tell She's got kids. I'm aware of that. Okay. Why do you but, think we're here? Okay, look, I, I don't know nothing. Well, here, you, something you not, just not said, even something insignificant. Clear that up for me, what you just because I said, why would you be less than candid with me at the other interview in the grand jury? And you said, why would that? Because I was irritated. Okay. Well, well being irritated and being put in front of 12 people and accused of stuff like this, I mean, you know, you're going to forget things and not be able to speak as well mm. as you normally would. I mean, there, there's, more, there's more to it than you're saying. Well, that's what I'm asking. That's, what I'm, that's exactly what and, I'm asking. You, some of those things you can't explain. I'm not going to sit well, here and take, try to explain. Take your time to relax. Look, I'm... As I said, I'm sitting here, I'm here working for you. If there's stuff to explain, explain it. I will take all day with you to fix it. And it would take all day to go through all this. I mean, Brother, it's, you're it's on the clock, you're getting paid, so am I. Uh, you, give me the some thumbnail sketch if you want. Just Man, explain to me what your big I, concerns are. I, I'm not going there. Why not? It makes no sense. I'm not going there, okay? 
Well, it's not okay for me. Well, okay, I mean, look at what we're dealing with here. We're talking about the potential murder of an individual or an accidental death, right? right? And if I knew anything, I would help you. No, no, out. But stop. Stop. We're going to. I, I know where you're going with this, man. Where am I going? You're going to just bring all this stuff about Crystal, and you know you need to nope. be, you know. No, go, go ahead. I told you. I'll, 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 I told you. I wouldn't go this whole read technique stuff with you, right? What I'm talking about just is what you just said about explaining it to me so I can understand where you're coming from. You don't have to go through a whole life's history unless you want to. Just You said that you're, you were irritated and there's things that you don't know, man. That's what you said to me. Help me to understand what some of those things are that I don't understand that would then make me understand the reason for this. There can be explanations is my point. Yeah, I mean, just this whole process, you know, Talk starting from the it. chief and going down. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But you said this thing. That this will be shown to him. He'll be irritated, and then he'll be watched. I, I just, I'm not doing that. It's that simple. I mean, I, there, what do you mean? I'm not understanding. You, you, you ought to be following me, man. If you're as sharp as, if you work for the, you ought to be following me. Okay. Talk to if me I like a to, kid, then. I, I, no, I'm not. Okay. I'm giving you every opportunity. I, and I'm telling you, no. Okay. I don't know anything about this. Well, that's okay. That's not what I'm talking about. You, but you said there's things that I'm I not know going into it. Explain it. I'm not going into it. Okay. Why not? Because it's not worth going into. I would think it would be very worth going into. It's not worth going into. Why not? Okay, I'm not talking about it, period. Why not? Because I'm choosing not to. Okay, that's fine. But tell okay, me, I'm face to face it. as a man, I'm not going to tell you the truth. That's all I'm asking. That's not what I'm just saying. Though. That's what I'm hearing. Well, then you need to you, rethink it. Well, help me to rethink it. Then. Look, I'm, I'm not, not going to. Listen to me. I'm not going into it, okay? No, I mean, I'm, not I'm, really I'm, I'm here to cooperate with your polygraph. He's literally not going into it. It's not worth it. Um, sorry, what? You better get. <laughs> you better start going into it. Wow. Yes, Kathleen says, how on earth does he think he'll keep wearing that uniform after conducting himself like this? He knows his career is done. Yes. July, August, September, October. Three months later, fired. And until then, I think from now until then, he was on administrative leave. <laughs> so, yeah. Although he's in his uniform here. For a time there, he was on administrative leave. And then October 16th of 2015 was when they announced he is fired. He's done. So, and it was like a whole press conference with the mayor and the police chief, uh, McCubbin. We saw a little clip from that. It, there's actually the whole press conference to still watch, which we haven't watched before, but I did show you clips. Yes, big deal. Goner. So, but what, what kind of police officer conducts himself like this? And all that stuff. And, you know, you can make any kind of notes you want. You can assume that I fail. I don't, it didn't bother me. What, what is it you haven't told me that's causing you such concern here? I'm not going into the, to everything that's happened. You know, I mean. Like what? The I, not, I don't have nothing to do with this. Guys showing up at my house? Look, this is the first day you and I have met, right? Yes. Okay. Have I been anything but cordial with you or anything? And I think I've been the same way with you. I'm you not know? accusing you of not being. Okay, I, there's nothing else to discuss here. Well, I mean, if, if I had something to give you, I would. I don't. Put yourself in my seat for just a second, okay? Okay. And I'm talking to someone who's a family member, essentially, mm -hmm. is missing and possibly dead. And you're sitting here, and that individual, who you know nothing about, never met before today, right? But you've seen some interviews where he hasn't been completely truthful about things. Not just kind of, excuse me, haven't been completely truthful about a couple of things. I've been 100% truthful. Listen to what I'm saying. You listen to what I'm saying. I've been 100% truthful. Why are you yelling at me? Well, because you're telling me I'm lying and I know I'm not. I know the truth, you know? And I've been 100% honest the truth. with you, no. the grand jury, and everybody else I've spoken no, with. No, Here's what I'm getting. Well, you just said Yes, I have. have. No, you haven't. I most definitely have. And if you don't want to believe it, that's your issue. It's not mine. Oh, oh. See, it's getting spicy now. Now he's really irritated. <laughs> I've been 100% honest. He's like, no, you haven't. He's like, yes, I have. Whoa, okay, we're seeing a tantrum here from Nick Houck. It's not just me. I showed you. Dude, I don't give a goddamn what your fucking computer said, okay? I think you do. I'm telling you that I have been 100% honest with you. Is this how you act? Does this act this way towards Crystal? What's somebody... Is, is this how I act toward Crystal? Yeah. I act toward, pe toward people that accuse you... me of lying when I'm not lying. Did she That's accuse how you of lying? No, I didn't know Crystal. Then why are you getting so angry? Because you're calling me a fucking liar. No, That's I'm why. just calling you a liar. Okay. I'm not you I don't. Today. I don't like it when people call me a liar. I'm being a hundred percent truthful with you. There's only the truth or not what you said. Really? Okay. Why can't you? I'm being truthful. Look, we're okay. not, not two-year-olds, right? Okay. So 
So it's not, yes I am, no I'm not, yes I am, no I'm not. We're, we're talking, look, I've been nothing but professional with you and trying to help you in okay. such a way. Other than calling me a liar when I'm not. It, it, look, if the right thing to do is to tell you you're not being truthful, then I'm going to tell you that. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Look, I don't care. Little lies, big lies, they're all the same in terms of the polygraph. I haven't told you any lies. That's not entirely true. It is 100% true. Then how but then you just said that sometimes in your interviews when you keep saying things over and over again that aren't actually the truth, it's because the reason is, you said there's a reason for that. <laughs> and that reason was he's a little irritated. But now he's saying no, he's telling the 100% truth, but he's the most irritated we've ever seen. So, <laughs> yeah, if he's a little irritated, just know. Mm -hmm. And irritation equals lies. <laughs> I don't mean to figure this out. Okay. What you just told me a moment ago, Maybe explain it to me so that maybe I misunderstood what you're telling me. Maybe you told me because you were irritated and there's all kinds of things that I don't know about whatever that I can't understand why you would say the things you said. That's what you It's just been an experience. Well, all this is going on. But that's that what guy I'm showing about. up over at my house taking car. I mean, this is crazy. Okay, but what, that's what I'm asking about. Are we talking about because of things that have been going on since this happened, or are you talking about there's things that have gone on over time that I'm not understanding? No, no, I'm talking about recently. Okay, well, how am I supposed to know that? If you yeah, don't talk I mean, this is simple stuff, man. I mean, I have been 100% honest with you, and surely, God, you can understand with people showing up at my house and my family out there taking cars, the neighbors are watching. Man, it's been, it's been screwed up. Of course. Oh, your image is being affected. You know, Brooksy was also worried about that, of like, what are people going to think of me? What's really important to me is to clear my name and my family's name. Yeah, okay, we've heard it from Brooksy. Now we're hearing it also from Nick over here, when he's like, there are neighbors watching people like taking my car and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Reputation, right? That's what you care about. The mask is slipping, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Okay. But I wasn't there. How do I know all this? Well, man, you just assume. I mean, if you were a patrol officer and you got your chief showing up and I mean, dude, that's crazy. Okay, Who the hell? A professional. I mean, they, 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 listen, they, they come, listen, they come up with all these lies about, well, there's bodily fluid in your car, there's blood. There is no way in hell there is any blood in that car. I have no idea. Everybody's told me that. You know, I didn't speak with the state police. That's the first thing they said. Okay. Uh, grand jury. I mean, it's crazy. But I'm not them, right? Okay, but it, I'm just saying that. This guy is like such a gaslighter, right? For real, because when it's like fact, like hard fact, <laughs> like a cadaver dog, luminal test. No, that's crazy. Just crazy, you know, <laughs> like making you doubt yourself. Um, hello, it's science. Even here, it's a lie detector test and you didn't pass, okay? He's like, that's just crazy talk right there, making up lies. All I care about is my image <laughs> my my reputation the neighbors are watching could you guys just please stop this thank you okay wow this is this is crazy it, it, it may be all i'm saying look i'm not balloting for all this up the evidence will speak for itself right sure so it really doesn't matter what people want to say or not the evidence that i've told you about that i can demonstrate are things that we already do have back that i can show mm -hmm. again i don't think there's anything that that uh, paint you in a horrible light. They just they show discrepancies with what you've said. Oh. Well, there there may be a very clear reason for and that. There is. Well, that's all I'm saying. I'm not. But when I and every time he says there is, he smiles like freaking Joker over here, just like there is. Okay, then what is it? What is it? What is the reason for those discrepancies? I accuse you of lying over here. Okay, and lies are bad. Nobody wants to hear lies. We've all lied in our lives. I don't care who you are. I have. No doubt about it. We all have. But nobody wants to hear that. But somebody who's telling a lie, it's the same thing as saying they're not being completely truthful, right? Okay, that's a little prettier way of saying it. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. I'm not saying you're so dishonest, you're so dishonest, you're dishonest. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is today with you, I have been 100% honest and I don't know nothing about it. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Well. And I'm saying that that's not entirely true, but it could be. It's, I mean, but if, listen to what I'm saying here, okay? You just you want to get mad in defense about it. Hear what I'm saying, okay? Go ahead. Because I'm, I'm truthful. I'm going to be completely true okay. with it as I have been. person would fail a polygraph on the questions that I asked you on a spectrum of issues, whether it be, yeah, you were out there and watched her get shot and killed by somebody. And again, I'm making that up, all right? You would fail if that had happened and you told me you knew nothing about it, right? Obviously. On the far end of the spectrum. If there's something you know about in your mind that you haven't told me or other investigators, could be as simple as 
uh, you saw an argument one time, and again, I'm making it up. You saw an argument between uh, Brooks and Crystal a year ago where she pushed him. Uh, they, they've never been physical with one another. I'm making it up. Okay. I'm just, what I'm talking about is the bigger picture is you would fail a polygraph on something that. But how do you know? Because you hardly saw Crystal. He thought he saw her a year ago, or like last year sometime, even though he lived on the same street. And he's like, no, they never got physical with each other. How do you know? Sure, you sure know a lot for someone who doesn't see them at all. <laughs> that simple or something that dramatic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It could be anything in between. I'm not assuming it's a worst case. In fact, I'm assuming it's something you just haven't got off your chest with me or someone else. That's all I'm saying. Is it a little more clear what I'm talking it, about? It is, but I, there's nothing on my chest. Well, but here's the thing, and I think that there is. Okay. And, and again, I, I'm not assuming that it's something huge and dramatic. It may be. I, I can't tell you what this thing is going into your brain and telling you yeah. this is what you're seeing. That's not what I'm saying. All this does is tells me, do you, not me, do you feel you are being completely truthful or do you not? And it is telling me you do not feel you're being completely truthful. Well, that's okay. Your level of what's truthfulness may be a little different than mine. That's why I take the time to explain what I'm asking and why I'm asking it. Mm -hmm. So it's clear when I ask that question, you can confidently say yes or no. Well, obviously, with those two questions in particular, about Crystal and about whether you're hiding any information, there's something that you weren't confident enough to say with 100% certainty. There's some other thing, and it may be a personal family issue, for all I know, that yeah. you feel, and frankly, I think it's probably something along those lines, that you feel, well, man, if I tell them that, they're going to think that he's just evil Peter. He did something terrible. I'm not going to think If that. anything stands out in my mind, I'll tell you. Well, then, what? looking back at, when you think about this investigation, and, and not talking about other investigators and else, the investigation and what happened to Crystal and how that's affecting your brother and his child. With all this, when you sit at home at night and laying in bed and you think about what, what's your biggest concern and looking back, because we all do, we all are analytical in law enforcement, we think about everything that's ever happened, right? And you start assessing this, you may not discuss it with everybody else, I get that. Uh, people handle emotions in different ways, especially in traumatic circumstances. Mm -hmm. I know I do, I'm an internal person. But I guarantee you that means I think about it inside more than I'm talking about it to other people. What I'm saying is, when you're sitting there at night and you're thinking about it, maybe you talk to Brooks, but maybe you didn't. What is it? Where do you, where's your mind focus on something that you look back at and go, man, maybe that's something that I should have talked to Brooks about, or maybe that's something that might have had something to do with it. Where do you focus? These are just suspicions in your mind, right? But what do you think about it? That's what cops do. That's what we do. Where does, where does your mind land at when you think about those? I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't, I didn't know Crystal. I didn't know Crystal. I don't really know my name. I know that's sad. Really I, I get it. I mean, I just wasn't around them. I don't. I never really saw them argue anything. If they did, they did it away from me. I don't. Well, no, that's fine. And if they did argue in front of you, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, people argue. So what? My point is, is if there's things anyone along that nature, mm -hmm. or even a comment that Brooks has made before or after she went missing, that may cause you some pause in your mind, that may be enough potentially to cause you to have an issue on the polygraph. It's just, I, I can't put words, I don't know what you know. I only know, do you believe you're being truthful or not? And you, and you don't feel you're being 100% truthful, as you said. Maybe you're being 99 now, I don't know. I, man, I don't know. I mean, I, if I did, I'd tell you. I don't, I don't want us to tell you. I'm just going to pause it. I did say up the polygraph test, but actually, this detective said it's a lie detector lie detector test and they could use it in court so ferguson is saying it's not a lie detector it's a polygraph and if it was actually a lie detector they would use them in court and not have to worry about the rest there's plenty of people that passed them but so actually my little heading is possibly wrong because they did say a lie detector test am i right i think so so they might still be able to use it if there's ever charges that he may face <laughs> we shall see I mean, I can't just make something up, you know, and throw it at you. I mean, you know what I, I ask you to. That's why I'm asking yeah. you just to tell me the truth and what you... See, the way it's working doesn't... Suspicions don't do anything. Wondering, thinking, oh, gosh, I don't know, what could it be that... has nothing to do with it. You only respond the way you do, the physiological signature of somebody who's thinking about this specific thing. Mm -hmm. Which means in your mind... And again, I have no idea what that thing is. could be something horrible, it could be something very explainable. But only you know what that is. And that's what I'm getting at is trying to get you to just... 
said, this is the thing that I was thinking about and some concerns about. And at that point, I'm going to, okay, well, that probably explains what I'm seeing here. And again, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm just, it's what we do. When people initially say, I don't know nothing about nothing, and it turns out, as I said, in a later night, they go, okay, I do know a little bit about something, but it's probably not important. But I'm going to have told you I don't know anything, so if I tell you this, you're going to think I'm lying to you. Well, that's not the case. Man, I, nothing stands out. I mean, I wish, I wish I could come up with something, but I can't. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, I, I've been 100% truthful with you. You know, I mean, I, I can't think of any examples. They never gotten, as far, I don't think Brooks would have ever got physical with her. I really didn't see them argue. I mean, I just, I ain't got nothing to give you. Well, and, and I'm glad to say it because everything from what little I've talked to people about Brooks in particular, mm -hmm. about you too, is, uh, there's not a history of violence and that kind of stuff. There's been no domestic accusations, no, nothing. No. Which means that whatever happened here was likely, you know, again, I hate to take these word accident, but it was, I say, unintended because people can get pushed and shoved. And um, I don't know, I haven't even seen her. How big is she? She's not a real big, is she? 100 and, I don't know, maybe 150 pounds or something. Yeah, so to me that, that's big, but yeah. uh, he's bigger than she is. Yeah. Right? Okay. And, and men being men, women, they get hot-headed and, and they started pushing and shoving and screaming and throwing tantrums and all that yeah. stuff. Not all right to throw a blanket, but a lot do. And all I'm saying is in those situations... <laughs> We've got about 10 minutes or so more uh, to watch. Dem Rogers said 100% truthful as he shakes his head no. That happens a lot, right? That happens a lot. Okay. That's what I was also thinking. I'm not sure if there's a big difference between the two. To me, I thought it's always the same thing. But what Ferguson was saying there was implying there's a difference. But when I look again, just to double check, it seems like it's the same thing. Polygraph, lie detector test. Will they be able to use it in court? Well, the guy in the beginning here said that they, he's like this. is scientific results and he's got lots of experience. He's uh, said all his credentials in the beginning. And so it could possibly be used in court. They don't usually use polygraph tests in court. But who knows if it'll be part of the collective evidence one day or if this guy will ever be charged as well. I wonder, we had a poll going yesterday. You know, do you think there'll be more arrests or not? I think there might be. <laughs> I'm thinking there might be, especially after all eight years of investigating the case. Who knows what Joseph Lawson may have told them and what they may have now. You know, they sure arrested Brooks Hauck very soon after Joseph Lawson was arrested. It's, it's a situation where she got mad and she pushed her shove and he defended not going to hit a woman. Uh -huh. um, it could be as simple as in the course of that she fell and hit her head on something. For all I know, again, I'm, I'm making up, I don't know, but in those circumstances, that's a really easy answer to what's occurred here. Again, we're going to find it, we're going to know exactly. Okay, so question for the audience. If it's the same and no, they don't. They don't usually allow it in court. This we know, but in the beginning, this, uh, this guy said that we can use this in court. So why would he say that? Do you think it's just to intimidate him, to scare him a little bit or what? <laughs> Probably, right? Oh my goodness, Alyssa. Is that what you intended? A $500 sticker? What? You said polygraph is the proper term, sometimes called lie detector, not admissible in court. Thank you so much. So maybe, <laughs> maybe he said it to intimidate him a bit. Like, you know what? We can use this in court. Okay, we can see you were lying which seems to have worked because he got so agitated and so defensive like my word Alyssa, are you sh is this is that the amount you wanted to send oh my word thank you so much let me know because i'm finding it like what I'm like shocking thank you thank you very much what oh my word okay so uh yorkie said the examiner was talking about a presumption of guilt test he gave before the polygraph. He said that was admissible in court. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Yorkie, for clarifying that. That is very helpful. Thank you. Okay, let's let's keep going. Yeah, we can, but, sure, no doubt. But, but the time to hear about those things, what actually happened out there, is before we get to that. I wish I could lead you there, but I can't. I don't. I, I've got nothing for you. Okay. I don't know where she's at. I, we didn't have nothing to do with it. I'm telling you that that's that's the way it is. I mean. I don't know, you know, if you watch the grand jury testimony or I'm my interview sure. with the state police, I mean, I you know, sometimes I don't speak well. Like, a lot of times when I go to court, I've got, my, I, I've got my report in front of me. I read word for word. I can't, I just don't remember all that stuff. And then you put 12 people in front of me and they start asking you a bunch of silly questions. Yeah, I mean, stuff I just that. blanks out. I mean, I just don't, I don't respond a lot of that. I get that. I'm not, uh, I don't like speaking in front of groups, period. Even 12 people in jury. I hate testifying. Mm -hmm. It's what we got to do. But... 
I'm also a student of people that's you know, what my master's degree is. So mm -hmm. when I watch the interviews, I don't just listen, but I listen to what's being said, how it's being said, statement analysis, kinesics, physiology, what people are doing mm -hmm. in the room. And you could turn off the sound in some of those interviews and see spots where an objective interviewer would point and go, you're not being completely truthful right there. Well, I did leave the sound on, so I listened to some of those spots. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't think they're huge critical issues, mm -hmm. and it may be as simple as what you said earlier, that because of irritation and accusations, you just decided you're not going to tell people about whatever, fill in the blank. Well, it's not that I don't that I didn't tell them. It's just that you know a lot of that stuff I didn't remember, you know. Okay. And I'm not going to start making stuff up or, or tweak it in any way. Yeah. I'll just straight up tell you I don't remember. If I don't, I'm not going to make something up. Absolutely, I get that, and I'm not. Um, I wouldn't want you to say something that you didn't know. I mean, that, you... Yeah, <laughs> rather don't make stuff up. Exactly, one would think. You do that you're lying, by definition. Yeah, but. The other side of that is, I mean, we all have politicians. Hillary Clinton is a prime example, right? And I'm older than you, but looking back in the Whitewater days, way back when, mm -hmm. she was interviewed, uh, her husband was interviewed. So we use those as studies and interviewing yeah, and all that. And what, what do they say more often than any other? What's the phrase they use? I don't know. I'm, I'm not that, up to date. That's actually what they say, but they say I don't recall. Oh, I see. And when it's clear that they do. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm not saying that's not the case with you, but when you hear, I don't recall, it tends to raise flags with people that are investigatively asking questions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the truth may be you don't recall, but that, that's certainly a, a viable uh, option. But when you couple those statements with all the other things you want in the room, and, and then when in some of those instances, not all, but there were a few, where we can physically I'd say, well, no, but he just said, when you didn't say, I don't recall, you said, I was here or I was not there. And they asked you several times, were you ever there? You said no. And we can show, well, yeah, but here's the evidence that shows you were there. If you're talking about the vehicles in the driveway, they, they harped on that yeah. and harped on I'm not it. Talking about that. I mean, they must ask that question ten times. I mean, I'm not we may have been, that. I don't know. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, as far as that, I think at the end of the day, you were, uh, you, you changed your answers up somewhere that to, to be as truthful as I think you could be. Mm -hmm. uh, when you said, no, I don't think we were there, and I'm sorry, don't think, and ultimately we have, and we could have been, well, we can tell whether you were or weren't there. I mean, that, that's simple. So whether you recall or not, you were, that's, so I don't care. But what I'm talking about are other times that I haven't given you the evidence on here today. I've asked you questions about where you were or where you were not, mm -hmm. and you were definitive. It wasn't, well, I don't think it was. I couldn't have been. It was, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and again, it's not a huge issue in the grand scheme of things in terms of you being in a certain spot or not being there. Mm -hmm. But if I already know the answer to that, the truth, the ground truth, as we say in mm -hmm. polygraph, and you're saying something other than what I know I can prove, it raises yeah, questions just, in my mind. Yeah, that, a, that's not happening. Well, but it is, is my point. It, uh, okay, whatever. It, 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 my point in that is... I, mean, I don't know what you're saying, I don't know what you've heard, but I'm just telling you, I didn't do it. I don't know nothing I about it. I don't know anything about it. My brother... I'm still going to ask all the time throughout this, guys. I'm going to ask the whole time. When he says, I didn't do it. <laughs> What's it? What is it? Because it seems like you're implying murder. Which eight years later is what the charges are. I don't do it. I don't know nothing about it. Like, okay. <laughs> Isabel said he almost convinced me. <laughs> right? So close. <laughs> okay. Continuing on. We're almost there. And I can tell you, I know him well enough. He didn't do it. It's just the way it is. I mean, Have you that... ever known somebody that you said wouldn't do something and it turns out they did? I'm sure I have, but it wasn't my brother. Right, so you're choosing to believe. Because, I, because, because I know him real well. I yeah. understand. Yes. Well, look, yes, I am. And if it's my brother, I'm going to feel the same way. Okay. okay. My point being is just because you feel that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, I feel, right? I feel 100%. Not 96, not 98. Right. I mean, it, there's just no, this is crazy. He would, not, he would not have done that. Well, what you're saying is you believe him at the end of the day. Well, it's not that I believe him because I haven't questioned him about it. You know, I haven't, that's... Why would... Because I know him well enough, I don't have to ask him that question. 
Oh, okay. You're getting cheeky now. He's getting, he's getting his smirk on. I know him well enough. I don't have to ask him any questions, but I thought you don't spend time with him anymore and you hardly see him. And even when you're on the farm at the same time, you know, you're just passing each other. So how do you know that you don't have to ask him any questions? How do you know he didn't do it? How do you know you have nothing to do with it? Whatever it is. Do tell, do tell. Wow. Sure. Well, if he is ever arrested, then yeah, this video <laughs> will likely be used in court. Okay, well, I guess what I'm asking really is this. Not, I don't think I would ask my brother if he did it or didn't either. I don't think I would. But what I would do as an investigator, is you as a police officer, if she's missing and you believe you anything good with it, I would investigate or want to question him and say, look, what, what do you think happened here? How do, how do we find her? How do we get her back? Uh, what do you want me to do about this? You know, that kind of thing. Those are conversations I have, I have had with my family, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And I'm wondering why you haven't had those kinds of conversations. Or maybe you have. We, we've talked briefly about it. Uh, well, well, talk to me a little bit about those conversations. I, I mean, I don't really remember word for word. We've spoke very little not, about it. You're not on I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not investigating it. I mean, I a lot of people have asked why we're not out there looking with our... Oh, now you spoke very little about it, but previously you didn't speak about it at all. You didn't ask any questions. You didn't even know Crystal was missing. Until you saw something, maybe on TV or on Facebook or something, right? Passed each other. Whatever. Like, <laughs> okay. Family members jumping out in the road giving us, so I'm not going to get out in the woods no, no. and have somebody end up threatening me or something, then I've got to do something silly. But, but what I'm asking is, you're not under oath here or anything. I'm not asking you to remember specifically what was. I'm just talking in generalities. Tell me about, were the conversations like what I just described? Hey, what's going on? What do you think happened? How can I help? I mean, I don't remember those. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not going to start making stuff up and I. Yeah, I'm just not well, going to do it. Let me ask this then. If, if you're me here, there may be reasons. Would it not strike you extremely odd? That I, just, police... I just think things get screwed up. You know, I'm not going there. I mean, it's, Wouldn't it's, you it... want to help him find her? Of course I want to help find her. Well, I, want her, to walk yeah. in her I want her to walk in his de door right now. You don't want to clear this whole mess up, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> but for that point, that's why I'm saying, wouldn't you have, didn't you ask him, hey, what can I do to help? I mean, we really haven't been around a lot, you know, around each other a lot, you know. We've been up there to the farm a few times. Both of us are just incredibly busy. I don't, I didn't know Crystal, you know. Okay. <laughs> so he knows exactly how long they dated, though. And his brother had a baby with Crystal. But he doesn't know Crystal, okay. So, like, come on, man. We went out to the farm a few times. We didn't really talk about it. Like, <laughs> that's unbelievable. The whole world was talking about it. What do you mean you didn't talk about it? And he's a police officer. Not anymore, but he was. He's dealing with this. I don't, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stress him out about it. Yeah, but aren't you gonna help? Of course I wanna help, but what, but, but, that's what, what, I'm getting at. but what can, what can we do, you know? That's what I mean. you ask him, what can I do? There's nothing we can do, you know? She's just gone. I mean, ho hopefully, like I said, she'll show up any minute, and if not, Obviously, you guys are going to find her at some point. Tell find out how she was killed. Is there evidence under her fingernails? All this stuff. And it's not going to point toward him or me. Who would it point to? I, well, how the hell would I know that? That's I'm not, what I'm asking you. I, I'm not investigating. Because you're so sure that it's not going to point towards you or him or your brother. So you or your brother. Nope, nope, 100% no. Somebody else. Well, we already knew one person lied about his whereabouts. That was Danny Singleton, who was arrested, charged with perjury, and spent eight months in prison, two months probation, done, right? So I don't know, I don't know if he'll ever face more charges or get re-arrested, who knows? But uh, he could have been, speculatively, the guy who planted the car. That's what I've seen speculated before. But Joseph Lawson, what a history he's got. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out. It's on the playlist. We did quite a deep dive on Joseph Lawson, who he is, how he may be connected to the Hawks. So check that out. But wow, he's really saying some specifics here, huh? You know, if you find that she was uh, killed and you, you might find DNA evidence under her fingernails, all that. Quite the examples to make just a few weeks after Crystal was last seen, when really this should still be a missing person's investigation a missing person's case and he's talking like this i mean wow 
Stephanie said, been here since Gabby. You are the real deal and so honorable, Gizla. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You're an OG. You've been here from the beginning. Thank you so much. In the crime, I don't know. Do you have any suspicions of anybody? I do not. I didn't hang around Crystal. I don't know her husband. I don't know her ex-husband. I, I don't know those people. If I had anything to throw out at you, I'd do it. Would you? Most definitely. What about other investigators? What about them? Would you tell them? I would tell other investigators. I don't do much care for Jon Snow, but the rest of them, I don't have a problem with them. Okay. State police, Mike Kaminsky's a good guy. Ed Mattingly's a good guy. Okay. Uh, you met, I, I don't know, is it Detective Snow? Is there? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know him other than... He's just know. admitted, he's openly admitted that he lies in court. I just can't deal with a guy like that. Okay. Did he admit that to you or something? He admitted it to a bunch of us over in the squad room. There was half a dozen of us over there. You know, I'm not going to get between a guy like that and my brother. I mean, I know he had nothing to do with it, but I don't want things to get screwed up either. Well, I agree. You know, I want this done right. I think we all do. Yeah. Would there be a reason that Brooks would say that he did discuss asking you for any help on this matter? No, there's no way he said that. No reason, no way, 100% not. Okay. I know they asked you about it, but I know when he was being interviewed, you called and basically um, paraphrased. Yeah, he was with John Snow. He was with John Snow. Oh, was that Yes. Okay. Yes, I called up there. Brooks is a really cooperative guy. He's honest. You know, and I just basically, I didn't tell him to leave. I told him, I said, you go ahead and finish up your, uh, he was given a narrative or whatever, a, a statement. Mm -hmm. I said, it's fine to give that. I said, say what you mean, mean what you say. You know, I asked him, I said, are they screwing you around? They asked him the same questions, went a different ways. Because he'd been up there for hours. This wasn't no one or two hours. He may have been up there like three hours or four hours. It'd been a while. And I figured John was screwing him around, and I just wanted to find out what, it, what was going on there. So that's all that was about. If they want to read more into it, that's up to them, you know? I'm just asking you, just because I had... Yeah, he was, with, he was with John Snow, period. Uh, was that the same interview when Ryan from the state police was there too? I'm glad that Jon Snow is okay, right? After how this guy expresses so much resentment towards him. A lot. You know, in the previous interview and this one. Also, uh, Bullets for Dinner. You said, hello everyone, just looking about. Nice to see you here. Uh, welcome everyone. I don't have any idea if Ryan was here. I know Ryan and another guy interviewed me, but I don't think that uh, the state oh. police have interviewed Brooks. Okay. I didn't there was a bigger guy. He was probably about, uh, I don't know, blonde hair, short, uh, kind of a heavier set guy, maybe about my height, 250, 240, something like that. And then there was Ryan Johnson was with him. So. Okay. Um, you ever seen Brooks lose his temper? Hardly ever. Hardly ever. What about in those rare occasions when he did? Hey, I, I can't even think of an example where he's just went off the, you know, I mean, every once in a while he may, you know, mess up on a house or something like that, you know, but, I mean, Brooks just, a, he, he's a pretty calm, laid-back dude. He's not, you know, I mean, he doesn't take medication. He is level-headed. Okay. I mean, he keeps up with about 100 rental property. He builds eight or ten houses all the time. I mean, he's just, he's he, younger, he, younger than you. He's younger than me. He's got to look up to you. I think a lot of times Brooks thinks he's over me, you know, I mean, it, it just depends. Is I mean, he a leader or a follower? I think both of us somewhat are leaders. Okay. I mean, we know that Brooks tried to outdo his brother by trying to become the sheriff. <laughs> In 2014, Brooks was like, I'm running for sheriff. That did not work out when his brother was already <laughs> a police officer, you know, so I think he might try to one-up him quite a bit. What about when two of you are together? Who's the leader? Not what bullying, realistically. I don't know. I'm okay. not going to say that. That's why I asked. <laughs> I'm just, I don't want to put him down. Um, <laughs> that tells me that that, that makes you believe so I understand. Um, what else haven't we talked about that might clear this up? If I knew, I'd tell you. Would you? Yes. Okay. If there was something that you knew would be helpful, but you felt 
you would you were not comfortable telling me or someone else, would you look me in the eye and say, there's some other stuff, but I just I prefer not to talk to you about it. You, you saying one of the detectives here and then just call you? you no, no, you mean right now as I'm talking, if if there are other things that you do know about that you're just simply not comfortable talking to me about, would you look me in the eyes now and tell me there's some other things, but I would just send me down on it. Yeah, I'd tell you that. I'll, I'd straight up tell you that. And are there some other things you just do not discuss with me? No. Anything else I have not asked you about today that in any way could be helpful? No. Okay. Think I've treated you fairly today? I think you have. I've been professional with you? Yes, sir. Have you yelled or screamed or cussed at you? No. Nope. Have you yelled or screamed or cussed at me? A little bit. Okay. And I understand that, okay? Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to, we'll step back out. We'll, we'll grab Ryan here and I'm assuming we'll get you back to work here. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Appreciate you coming in. All right. And that's that, you guys. And he's like, sounds good to me. And then he gets up at the same time. Oh, man. Just like, hello. Let the examiner have some space. Renee Hatton, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And to Alyssa, I didn't see you answer. I was still checking. Are you sure? Alyssa Henry gave a $500 super sticker today. Alyssa, please email me <laughs> if that's in, by any chance a, a, a mistake. Because, whoa, if not, thank you. Oh, my word. Thank you so much. You said polygraph is the proper term, sometimes called lie detector, not admissible in court. And, Renee, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wow. So that was a lot, right? That was like a lot of... <laughs> Which one was more annoying to you? <laughs> the Brooks Hauk interview or this guy? I still feel like the Brooks one was far more annoying. <laughs> that was a lot of going in circles with no information really being shared at all, right? With uh, Nick Hauk, it's almost, as the former police chief said, it's almost what he doesn't say or what he insists on that's really the red flag, right? Okay, yeah, Patriot Lady says, this interviewer has tried every technique in the book. I know, right? Oh, man. <laughs> so now we have done a deep dive on this case right? We've done a full timeline overview. We've looked at the indictment. It is, it's the indictment. It's got details from the indictment, but it was basically Brooks Hauk got a $10 million bond and then his team asked for it to be reduced. And then that motion was denied. And we saw that document. Okay. And a lot of details were shared in there. So we looked at that as well. It's all in the playlist. We looked at who Joseph Lawson is, who Brooks Hauk uh, is, and why he was arrested and what they've been charged with and everything. We've done a deep dive on this case now. I'm not sure if there's more. There's probably more to look at. Um, I mean, there's all the other cases that could be linked. We've touched on Jason Ellis's case. There's also um, someone mentioned earlier in chat, actually, Daniel Caho. I need to look at that one as well from Bardstown. And then there was a double homicide of a mother and her daughter that's unsolved in Bardstown as well. Their surname was Netherlands, so they, they call it the Netherlands uh, murders, which is confusing to me because I live in the Netherlands. You know what I mean? I'm like, what? The Netherlands murder? Yes, but the, the a mother and daughter. So I, I hope that with these arrests that there'll be answers for some other families. I mean, now we already know with uh, Brooks Hauk being arrested and charged with Crystal Rogers' murder and tampering with evidence, and Joseph Lawson uh, with conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence, then suddenly, since the arrest, Nick Hauk was using a fictitious name to sell a gun to an undercover agent, and that just so happens to be very likely, four out of five criteria met already, the gun that killed Tommy Ballard, Crystal's dad. I mean, that's huge. There's been a lot of big, big news uh, in the last month or, so, month or so in this case. And it's been eight years in the making. The FBI joined the investigation, I believe it was late 2020. Uh, they were the lead. They've already been involved, but they became the lead in the investigation. I think it was in August 2020. And the amount of search warrants they've done over the years, the amount of everything. It's been a long road uh, for Crystal's family. And I cannot imagine how Sherry feels losing her daughter and her husband oh, my word mko thank you so much i really really appreciate it thank you all for being here with me as we um looked at this interview and the polygraph uh debrief of nick hauk remember he is 
innocent, not even innocent or proven guilty. He's not been arrested or charged with anything, but there is speculation out there. And <laughs> I wouldn't really doubt that he watches things like this. Is he watch? Are you watching now, sir? <laughs> you know, that must be weird. Like eight years later, like everybody's analyzing <laughs> his interview. Yes, because it's, um, it's got a lot of red flags, right? So will there be a third arrest? Will there be more arrests? We don't know. It's also come out that the Hauk family recorded the grand jury proceedings. Wow. So I don't know if they'll face charges for that as well. Yesterday, someone in chat that was local said that um, that could be a felony charge for the Hauk fa for each of the family members who did that, who participated in that recording. So yes, let's see uh, what happens in the case going forward. I mean, I wish the trial would be like now, but it won't be. They said it'll, they, they're actually anticipating it'll be likely in 2025. But whenever the trial will be, we'll be watching, right? I believe that um, Joseph Lawson will be in court next on October 26th. Yes. So he's going to be in court on October 26th. I think Brooks Hauk is going to be in court next in February. February. Of next year we almost we almost at the end of the year can you believe it guys this year has flown by so thank you so much everyone uh for watching here with me if you made it through the whole stream did you thank you so much if you're a replay watcher and you made it to the end oh my word thank you so much you guys know i'm going to be doing some timestamps now for you as i always do so if you only joined halfway through at the tail end there don't worry i'm going to make some timestamps for you so you can easily navigate to key moments throughout the stream it takes me a little while because it's quite a long stream but i will be doing that now and you can check in the pinned comments in the description box or you can just hover over the video to see these chapters that i've made if you the audience also see important moments you can also just use the same time format and put timestamps in i don't think youtube takes those away you know so it's normally a format of two digits colon two digits colon two digits right so if you find a key moment or something you want to point out you can also do that that's what I'll be doing. Thank you so much, everyone, for your amazing support. Remember that just watching my videos is a great source of support. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who's made it over to Patreon. That's a really, really great uh, place where I also make sure to give you guys <laughs> Forest Walks and Fury videos and all sorts of things. I'm sure you can hear this background music a little bit now. Got a little bit of background music for you. Mods, thanks for everything you do. Really appreciate it. And members, if you just joined today, check out the members only playlist because we just did a stream, I think it was two days ago. Um, and there's a whole members only playlist for you to catch up on okay there's lots of content for you to watch there so i will see you in the next one check out my youtube shorts and community tab because there's some updates there big things happening in the delphi case you might want to check that out okay i'll keep an eye on that and i will see you guys in the next one i might be on core tv tomorrow you guys talk about this case um with uh, julie grant opening statements we shall see so courttv.com, maybe if you want to take a peek, I might be there somewhere around 8.15 a.m. Eastern time. Yes, you might see me appear. <laughs> okay, if I'm there, I will, of course, uh, screen record and all that and show you guys in case you miss it. All right. So have a wonderful evening. Happy new week to you. I know it's still Sunday for many of you afternoon. For me, it's clocking over to Monday any minute now. I'll see you probably tomorrow again. <laughs> okay, bye, everyone.